Stranger had more. Tall, dark, Stranger in the metal lance pace. For 44 years, the Meadowlands Pace has been a springboard to harness racing stardom, and it always brings out all of the top players ready to hoist that prestigious trophy. It's also produced some of the most memorable moments in the sport's history. The epic battles, artificial, some beach somewhere. Last year's throwdown with Tall Dark Stranger and Poppy Rob Hanover, and they are all shooting the 10 finalists tonight to bring you uh, excellent action here live over the next couple of hours, Dave. Four straight stakes races here, right here. The Meadowlands Pace Night on Fox Sports 2 is ready to roll. Welcome everybody to East Rutherford, New Jersey in Meadowlands Racing and Entertainment. This is the home of the world's greatest harness action here. What a tremendous night of action we have coming at you over the next couple of hours. I'm Dave Brower, proud to be your host tonight and even prouder to be joined by Harness Racing Hall of Famer, Mr. Dave Little. Dave, now that we're on camera, let's get the bad news right out of the way here. Mother Nature here in the metropolitan area has been playing games with us all day. And she sure is a fickle lady, Dave. The weather earlier today when I came into work was just terrible, raining cats and dogs. And then about 6 o'clock, the skies cleared. It was sunny. It was humid, but it was nice. Now we see that bad weather is moving in once again. Hopefully the track condition for the Meadowlands space isn't sloppy, but I suspect that it might be. However, can we turn sloppy track lemons into sloppy track lemonade? Maybe just maybe with a sloppy track, we can look at the horses who did well in the off going a week ago and assume that they'll do well again tonight. And Dave, we have a tremendous field for the 45th Meadowlands Pace. So let's take a look at our finalists. And in last week's elimination, we saw him on the tape roll in there. Southwind Gendry definitely served notice to me and all the other Harness fans that he is back in very top form. Yes, the second best two-year-old Colt Pacer from a year ago, Southwind Gendry. He was so sharp uh, at the uh, Breeders' Crown at Harris Hoosier Park. And I'll tell you what, that was really some performance by Southwind Gendry last week racing at the Meadowlands in the Meadowlands Pace Elimination. Yanni Gingras saw an opportunity. He said, you know what? Nobody left to my inside, so I'm going to go to the front end and go to the front end he did. What was surprising is for a horse with his resume to go to the gate at 10 to 1 and win so convincingly. But waiting in the wings is last year's division champion. We just showed you a little roll in of the last fall's Breeders' Crown. His name is Perfect Sting for Hall of Fame trainer Joe Holloway who's never had a whole lot of luck in this particular race. The Colt rolled a perfect 10, winning all of his starts as a freshman, including this dead heat in the Breeders' Crown at Hoosier Park. Just remarkable. You see Dave Miller going to work on perfect sting, trying to remain perfect in 10 starts on the season. Up you'll see on the outside, there's Brian Sears with number six, summa cum laude. They come to the wire, they hit the wire, and oh, I still can't tell them apart. Well, I tell you what, the photo finish cameras could not separate them as well as on the wire of perfect sting and summa cum laude dead heated in the Breeders' Crown. But Perfect Sting now, his three-year-old campaign, it hasn't gone quite as smoothly as anticipated, but tonight, with a rebound effort in the Meadowlands pace off a very respectable try in his elimination, he certainly can go back to the top of the heap. He certainly can. In last week's elimination, over a very sloppy and sticky track, the Sting came charging home to be third. Do you think that type of an effort will be good enough to win tonight's final? You know, it will, but the fact of the matter is, luck's going to play a big part, Dave because when you have as much power leaving from the outside post as you do tonight in the pace, there's going to be a lot more action down the front end. Now, can a horse like Perfect Sting find himself close enough to the action sitting in along the rail leaving from the inside post to be close enough to strike? Or is the winner going to come from second or third over as the front end tires after those horses work hard to maintain the lead? There's a look at the resume that Perfect Sting brings to the table tonight. And listen, here's what we do have coming for you over the next couple of hours live on Fox Sports 2. Four major live stakes races, Dave. Tell us who they are. Well, I tell you what, we're going to start in race six with the Dartley Houghton Memorial. And I tell you what, that's going to be a great race of some of the best older pacing mares in the sport. Then we're going to go to the seventh race, the Free for Allers, with a William Hour Houghton Memorial, a purse of $265,400. Then the eighth race, the Ebby Gary Jr. 
Hamiltonian maturity to be contested at a mile and an eighth, a bulky field of 12. Always an interesting puzzle for handicappers. And then, of course, the ninth race, the featured event of all, the $700,000 Meadowlands Pace. Dave, we get so excited each and every year for this particular night. So many great horses on the card here. Who are you most looking forward to seeing tonight? I tell you what, Lion Sentinel is a horse who really excites me because just two weeks ago in the Artscape, she went to the front end and scored in 148 flat, an all-time record for a four-year-old pacing mare. I don't know if she can repeat that performance from the outside post tonight, but I'm sure that Tim Tietrich is going to have the pedal down early and try to get her to the lead. We promise to bring you a fun one tonight. We are looking forward to it. We are excited. So, hey, it's time to introduce the third member of our broadcast team. She is in the back paddock, hopefully trying to stay dry tonight. Jessica Otten is her name, and she is with the Meadowlands Pace Morning Line favorite. Thanks so much, Dave. I'm actually joined by Lawless Shadow. A lot of those horses are out warming up right now. Hopefully the rain is continuing to hold off. I am with Lawless Shadow. He's starting from post five for Dr. Ian Moore. Mark McDonald, he finished second his elimination. It was a really nice uh, prep for the Meadowlands Pace final. Back to you guys. All right, thank you very much. And now we do take a look at the raindrops which have sprung back into action here in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Hopefully they'll go away after too, too much time. Thank you very much, Jess. Hey, you know what? The Meadowlands Pace is also about gambling. It's a big business night, and we've got an ace handicapper, the fourth member of our broadcast team. His name is Gabe Pruitt. And, Gabe, in that elimination last week, I know you didn't like winner Hella Blue at 80-1. to 1. What do you think about his chances tonight? Well, Dave Brown, the only thing better than seeing those raindrops is uh, filling them out here in the winter circle. I did not like Hella Baloo last week. Uh, 81 to 1 after that elimination, I had to pick my program back up and say Hella Bahu. I had no idea uh, that that upset was looming. That was a good elimination. We're actually going to roll it back and take a look at last week's elimination. You're going to see Hella Baloo there who's sitting on the inside. He's going to shake loose there. He's drifting out of the center of the track right now. How about the real wise guy horse in this race, guys? The one that's actually fourth there on the inside. You'll see him knifing through with a lot of pace as well. But it was Hella Baloo down the center of the course here, 81-1. to 1. Biggest upset in the Meadowlands pace, elimination or bottle, since Holborn Hanover way back in 2004. So Hella Baloo draws post two to nine. He won't be 80-1, to 1, but he is still going to offer a very good price. Oh, it's going to be such a great final tonight. We are definitely looking forward to that, and we are definitely looking forward to our first live event of the night. So after this short timeout, when we come back, we will set the scene and get you ready for the dark. Dorothy Houghton Memorial. As we throw it to break, though, let's take a little pace memory in the past. And you heard Gabe say it, Holborn Hanover, the biggest upsetter in pace history. in 120 and 1 and it's Camelot Hall as they come to the top of the stretch. Metropolitan now with racing room and he starts to angle from the pocket a length and a half away. Georgia Pacific there. Times are changing. Hits his best stride on the outside. They're driving to the finish. It's Metropolitan a short lead. Holborn Hanover gunning for a big upset. Up on the outside. Times are changing. Holborn Hanover a shocker in 149 flat. Times are changing second. A photo for Pennsylvania is sort of the pinnacle of standard bred breeding. The best stallions stand in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania has what I consider to be the premier racing and breeding program in North America. Pennsylvania breds are worth a lot of money compared to other states because of the races they can be in. Many farms have moved into the state because of our program. This is the creme de la creme, where the top horses are being bred and being raised. Purple Haze Standard Bread Adoption Program was created in 2018 by Wanda Policini. Purple Haze provides training to transition into new careers and finding homes. Horses are started with groundwork and then ridden in an arena before going on. Horses at Purple Haze are evaluated and adopted out based on abilities and temperament. If you have a horse that you care about, or if you're looking for a great pleasure horse, please contact Purple Haze Standard Bread Adoption Program. 
Diamondback Farm was the number one breeder in Delaware, New York, and Ontario for 2020 sire stakes. With back is bringing an exciting yearly roster to the 2021 sales, highlighted by the first crops from Boston Red Rocks, first Pennsylvania sired yearlings from Heston Blue Chip, first crop from Mets Hall, and first Ontario sired yearlings from my MVP. For more information, visit winbackfarm.com for sale lineups. That's winbackfarm.com. Want to get your career in horse racing off to a fast start? Well, the University of Arizona's Racetrack Industry Program is your winning ticket. The Racetrack Industry Program has served as a springboard to some of the industry's most successful individuals with a proven track record of job placement right out of college. If you want to earn a degree in the exciting horse racing industry, the Racetrack Industry Program can put you in the winner's circle. And we welcome you back to Fox Sports 2's live coverage of Meadowlands Pace Night here in East Rutherford, New Jersey. You took a look uh, at the steaming new grandstand here, the gleaming new grandstand, especially with the uh, raindrops continuing to fall, Dave. And unfortunately for us tonight, I think this is going to be a big weather story. It's, it, it's going to rain. No, it's going to rain. There's no question about it. So it's going to change the form a little bit. It's just a matter of who can really sift through the PPs and find the horses who react well to the sloppy conditions. Not always easy to do in the harness game. Okay. We have our first live event of the night coming up, the Dorothy Houghton Memorial for a purse of over $178,000. It's time to introduce the man who will call all the action tonight in his 30th year of calling races here at the Meadowlands. Welcome, Ken Workington. Happy Meadowlands Pace Night. And a happy Meadowlands Pace Night to you guys as well. It's been a, a really exciting night so far with a track record, fastest trotting mile of the season, 149 and four Manchego. And they're on the track for the Dorothy Houghton Memorial TVG Free For All Open Mare, sponsored by David and Mary Ellen McDuffie. This starts the Fox Sports 50 cent pick for the one peaky sneaky. Bugler Mark O'Keefe with the call to post. Todd McCarthy driving the one, Peaky Sneaky for Nancy Tactor, Howard Taylor, Judith Taylor, and Order by Stable. Gia Surreal, number two with George Brennan driving for Nick Drennan, owned by Graham, Perone, Winters, and Mariano. Three, Snobby Town, Dave Miller in the bike for Ron Burke, Burke Racing Stable, Weaver Bershemi, and Malilo. Four is Hen Party with Andrew McCarthy driving for Tony Alanya and Crawford Farms. The five Soho Burning Love, Corey Callahan driving for Jim King Jr., owned by Joanne Looney King, Carsey, and Jeff Fout Racing. JK First Lady, number six, Dexter Dunn for Nancy Tactor and Three Brothers Stables. Major occasion, last year's winner of the Dorothy Houghton Seven with Brett Miller driving for Nifty Norman and ends at Racing Stable. Keep Rockin', number eight with Brian Sears, Nifty Norman trains for Richard Paulucci. Nine is Rocknificent with Scott Ziran, trained by Linda Toscano for Enviro Stables Limited, South Mountain Stables, and Jeff Gorrell's Little E. The 10 Lion Sentinel, the world champion Art Escape winner, 148, Tim Tietrick, Jim King Jr., and three Lions Racing. And how about another world champion and two-time Dan Patch Award winner, 11 War We You Butte with Yannick Jingra, trained by Ron Burke, Burke Racing Stable, Crawford Farms Racing, Jerry and Teresa Silva Purnell and Libby and Phil Kalura. For $178,500, the Dorothy Houghton Memorial, Exacta Trifecta, this starts the Fox Sports 50 cent pick for $125,000 guarantee and low 15% takeout. And Gabe, you've got Lion Sentinel, 148 last week in the Artiscape World. Record performance stuck outside here. The two, Gia Surreal draws better, and she uh, comes off a game grind from Pose Day. She was right there. JK First Ladies, my best bet tonight, Gabe, sitting on a big effort here. She owns a big kick. Dexter Dunn took her over last year's winner, Major Occasion. So uh, quite a puzzle here to start the uh, pick four. 
You know, you know, it really is, Ken, and uh, as the rain showers really begin to pick up here as well, we're going to be well above this $125,000 guarantee, I think. But, yeah, that's the uh, story. If Lion Sentinel had drawn inside here, she was going to be a heavy favorite uh, in this spot. Obviously, post 10 on the far outside there, a no picnic here at the Meadowlands. I do think Gia Surreal comes off that very good runner-up performance. I think that uh, she could get it done here for the Western New York Connections. In fact, she's up there at 9 to 5 on the board right now. But I'm too deep here at the opening leg of this to pick four. I'm going to use both of those mares, the two and ten here to kick things off. And we're going to try and find some value in the final three legs of the pick four sequence. We've got race seven, the William Houghton Memorial $265,000 event. Last year's Breeders' Crown champion, the two-century Pharaoh, he comes off maybe his best performance of the season. He was loaded and flying there late. Backstreet Shadow, the four, probably going to be the favorite at this spot. He was the favorite to roll with Joe. Just had a very tough trip, but the horse I really like in the seventh race, Andrew Bayama, the he this horse rides in razor sharp. He was unreal at a win here. Two starts back. He was home in 25 and one. One of the most impressive performances I've seen in quite some time. So we're three deep there in race seven. Move on to race eight. Three deep there as well. That's the mile and an eighth. Hamiltonian maturity. Going to go with a couple of mares in this spot. The uh, three hypnotic AM. She comes off a very good start. Trainer Marcus Melander. We caught up with him a little earlier tonight. He was very confident in her chances moving into this. Last year's Hamiltonian champion, Ramona Hill. She's obviously had her issues of late, but uh, you can never count her out. She comes off a good qualifier. I'm going to use her as well. And then, of course, ready for money. We'll start from that tough second tier post 12. No question the horse to beat. He's the newest millionaire in the sport of harness racing. That's going to lead us into the big dance at the Meadowlands Pace Race 9. Four deep there. I think Perfect Sting's likely going to be the favorite. Uh, he did nothing wrong last week. Spread it home in 25 and 1. Going to toss him at the ticket. Chase H. Hanover. That's the horse we look back at the replay rollback a little earlier. That's a big price. And I'm going to toss on 1 800 and also from the far outside, American Courage. So it's a $36 play for me as we get dialed in here on this big pick four covering four major stakes races. Thank you very much, Gabe. That is a very affordable ticket. Hey, add on to it, subtract a few, put your own opinion in, but make sure you get some action in here on the final. Our countdown clock in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. This race is named after one of the great ladies in all of harness racing, Dorothy Houghton. Who was she? Well, Dorothy Houghton, to be, give you some perspective, her husband, William Houghton, was kind of in the Babe Ruth, Ty Cobb type of uh, caliber of harness racing trainer as those fellas were to baseball. And Dorothy was the matriarch of the family. She was always on the scene, always supporting Billy. And I must tell you, at several Hall of Fame dinners, my wife Debbie and I were pleased to be in her company. And she was just a lovely lady. And we were so sorry to lose her a couple of years ago. Yeah, I call them Harness Racing's first family, and I think that's very aptly said. Still a couple of seconds to go as these uh, mares get ready to go to the gate. All eyes probably on number 10, Lion Sentinel, who set a world record in her win in the Art Escape just last week. Yeah, Lion Sentinel, I mean, that was just a remarkable effort when you consider that she went 148 flat becoming the fastest four-year-old pacing mare in the history of the sport. Her other win this year was also of the amazing variety. I tell you what, she is set to go and not the favorite. And we are ready to go. Here's Ken Workington at the top of the stands with the Dorothy Houghton Memorial. It's post-time preferred equine starting gate rolling. And how about this? Nine to five on two, Gia Surreal. And two to one on ten, Lion Sentinel. Gia Surreal looking to turn the tables. A six, JK First Lady at three to one. For $178,500, the Dorothy Hutt Memorial, sponsored by David and Mary Ellen McDuffie. Here they come. And they're off. J.K. First Lady shoots out of there, and so does Keep Rockin' on the outside, and that's Rocknificent. Blasting off, Peaky Sneaky, Gia Surreal put in play into the top four. Say so round the first turn and cutting the corner, War We U Butte from the second tier got away in fifth position. Snobby Town is racing sixth, and then it's Hen Party on the inside, seventh. Looking to go up is Keep Rockin' on the outside, followed by Lion Sentinel, third to last year, then Soho Burning Love and Major Occasion. Last week's winner is, or last year's winner is last 25 and four. Wicked opening quarter here for Rocknificent, who paid the price to clear the lead and we'll look for a second quarter breather. J.K. First Lady is revved up on the helmet for Dexter Dunn. It's Peaky Sneaky on the inside third. Gia Surreal will do it first over again and she's tracked on the outside as they pass the half by Snobby Town fifth. Into the flow goes Keep Rockin' third over sixth. A shuffle for Lion on the inside that's War We You Butte getting shuffled back and into the flow. Lion Sentinel, she's fourth over past the half. She is tracked on the outside as they pass the 
the half on the inside hand party. 53 and 3 was the halftime, and they hook up. Gia Surreal taking it to Rocknificent on the inside. So JK First Lady, hoping they cancel themselves out, is sitting the pocket and needs to shake loose. Right there is Snobby Town in third, and Peaky Sneaky is looking for racing room. Fanning to the outside, Lion Sentinel has some work to do into three quarters in 121 in the driving rain. In the stretch, big effort from Rocknificent out of the pocket. And on the outside, here comes J.K. First Lady. J.K. First Lady, Dexter Dunn. And she's got open road and she draws clear. J.K. First Lady, Rocknificent, a rock solid second. And then close, either Pinky Sneaky or Lion Sentinel. J.K. First Lady was first in a dazzling 147 and four fifths. Oh, the excitement just getting rolling here. Ken Workington, thank you very much. A stakes record falls, and by quite a bit. The previous record was set by Rocklamation back in 2014, 148-3. Tonight, J.K. First Lady, Dexter Dunn, Nancy Tactor in 47-4. And, and don't forget, Dave, it was just two weeks ago when Lion Sentinel became the fastest four-year-old pacing mare in the history of the sport with a 148 clocking here. J.K. First Lady sits the pocket with Dexter Dunn, sits off all the fast fractions, hits the wire in 147-4, and four, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is a brand new world record for a four-year-old pacing mare. J.K. First Lady hits the wire first in the Dorothy Houghton Memorial. There's our low-mo view of the winner, and you could see driver Dexter Dunn with supreme confidence. He ended up putting J.K. First Lady in a perfect spot, sitting second, stalking that hot pace, and once she got out, it didn't seem like he had to ask her for too much. You know, we always talk about it ad nauseum, Dave, here at the Meadowlands, but you've got to be in it to win it, and what Dexter Dunn did was brilliant. He left the gate hard around that first turn. I have him first around the first turn before yielding to number nine, Rocknificent, who really had her mind on the front end in 25 and four. You know that Dexter Dunn at that point was sitting very confident and very chilly, knowing that number nine was not going to be yielding to any of the comers on the outside, even as G is surreal, came calling against Rocknificent at the 5 8 mile marker. Dunn continued to sit chilly in the two hole, and JK First Lady gave it at crunch time, and she gave just enough to win it in a remarkable 47-4, and four, given the track conditions. Dave, this is such a special horse for the connections here. Trainer Nancy Tactor developed this mare's dam. JK, she's a lady, and, and raced her to a horse of the year season. This was her first offspring. She's a homebred for the three brothers stable who've been in the business a very long time. The Katz brothers, I don't care if it's raining out there, I'm sure they're gonna step on out to get their picture taken. No, there's no question about it. And we see the Katz brothers here at Saturday morning at the baby races. They love to support the sport and it's great to see them in the winner's circle. JK First Lady started the year 0 for 5. Oh baby, what a time to win your first of the year when you're going for 178.5. Such a special night, Meadowlands Pace Night for Nancy Tactor. Of course, she won it last year with the eventual Horse of the Year, Tall Dark Stranger. So hopefully she will uh, get back to the winner's circle. There you see the umbrellas there as the rain continues to come down. But one thing about the Meadowlands Winner's Circle, Dave, you always get a lot of smiles. There's no question about that. People love to get their picture taken. And then the, the horse, even when they cooperate. And I'll tell you what, JK First Lady is being a perfect lady as she has the cooler on her reigning her as the Dorothy Houghton Memorial winner, the open mayor's pace for 2021. And I tell you what, that time even surprised me. Amazing fraction set on the front end. I don't know what else is gonna happen tonight, Dave, but you know we're gonna see some lightning fast miles. Right, momentarily we will get some winner circle reaction from Gabe Pruitt there. He'll have an umbrella too, most likely, but what a nice photo there. The daughter of Western Ideal. She's just a four-year-old and boy, I'll tell you what, she picked a great time to win her first race of the year. Yeah, it really is just, it, timing is so much of everything. And in the artist gate, when Lion Sentinel was winning in 148, JK First Lady, it's not that she was a badly beaten third, but she simply couldn't keep up with Lion Sentinel that night. But as you can see, the post position led to Lion Sentinel not getting a good trip. That one was pushed four wide around the far turn, turning for home after a third over trip, and basically had no shot since JK First Lady was so close to the pace. All right, the Dorothy Houghton is now official and you see the prices number six jk first lady 660 440 and 320 nine rocknificent 1860 and 920 
Peaky Sneaky from the rail finished third at 880. Your two dollar exacta, sixty six dollars and forty cents. Two dollar trifecta combination, six nine one, seven hundred fifty six dollars and twenty cents. And if you had that dime super, one hundred and thirty two dollars and ninety cents. We don't know who Gabe's going to have in the winner's circle just yet, Dave, but give us a little idea about this Dexter Dunn guy and what kind of an impact he's made on harness racing in North America since he emigrated from down under. I know. I tell you what, he hasn't been in this country all that long, but he is now the two-time defending United States Harness Riders Association Driver of the Year, and certainly he is in the hunt for a third consecutive trophy. Dunn, coming into this weekend, was the leading driver at the Big M with 101 victories. Last year in the fall meeting, he was by far the leading driver when Todd McCarthy was second, another down under one who came over from uh, New Zealand, I'm sorry, Australia. And then, of course, in the, meeting, in the meeting prior to that, Dunn got beat on the last day by Yannick Gingra, losing out to that ace, 86 to 85. Dunn's had a remarkable impact since he's arrived. All right, you saw her big smile in the winner's circle. Trainer Nancy Tactor is with Gabe Pruitt. Thanks a lot, Dave Brower, and I'm standing by with trader Nancy Tactor and owner Alan Katz. And Alan, I'll begin with you. This filly has to be awfully special. I know she's a homebred filly. She's been so great throughout her career. It's been fantastic. The man was fantastic. Our brother's fantastic. The whole family keeps us in the business. And Nancy, I know you've been waiting for this, her first win of the year. Nice breakthrough win tonight. Dexter could not have diagrammed that trip any better. No, he drove her absolutely perfectly. You know, she likes to follow, and she has that quick burst when she comes off a helmet. So I was watching the race, and I'm like, wait, 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 and he pulled her right at the right time. So um, she's a great filly. You know, J.K., she's a lady. is obviously very special to all of us. And, you know, J.K. and Manera is doing so well out in Indiana, who also is owned by the three brothers. So, you know, it's a family horse, and everything she does, she does perfectly. So we're happy with her. Well, congratulations. Speaking of special, last year you won the uh, Meadowland Space, the big one here tonight with Tall Dark Stranger. What do you think about 1-800's chances coming into this event? Uh, he flattened out a little bit through the stretch last week. You know, when I warmed him up last week, he was a little bit flat. You know, I didn't think of it then. I was kind of like, you know, oh, I was happy that he was quiet because, you know, you want to keep horses quiet before the race. But today he was a different horse out there. He was on the bit, more alert. And, you know, when I came down the stretch with him, he was ready to go. So I think we're going to see a better performance from him tonight. All right, congratulations, guys. Plenty of work to come from the Tactor Barn uh, later on this card. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gabe. There is Nancy Tactor's chance to win her second straight Meadowlands pace as she prepares 1-800 for the Meadowlands pace coming up in just about an hour and a half. So she's the star of the show so far. And guess what? Coming up after this break, our Jessica Otten will have a sit-down chit-chat with Nancy Tactor. Stay with us. We'll be back after this. Gateway Farm is the pinnacle of standard bred training facilities. Conveniently located in Manalapan, New Jersey, making for easy access to East Coast racetrack. Gateway Farm consists of 200 acres with 650 stalls, therapeutic pool and spa with one mile and half mile training tracks and sand jog track. Gateway Farm is home to some of Harness Racing's top stables. Come see why Gateway Farm draws rave reviews from horsemen. For information, call 732-446-7100. Gateway Farm, the place with the mile. Bow River Jewelers are the premier designers of standard bread jewelry for more than 30 years. We incorporate today's latest fashion designs into our standard bread jewelry, creating a unique piece of jewelry which can only be found at bowriverjewelry.com, your standard bread jewelry headquarters. Visit bowriverjewelry.com today for your piece of standard bread jewelry. Don't be shut out. Purchase today at bowriverjewelry.com.
in a fierce duel. 120 and four into the stretch of the Meadowlands pace. Poppy, Rob, Hanover in front. But here is Ali Wag Hanover who slingshots off cover. Tall Dark Stranger battling back on the inside. Then Manticore in deep stretch. Poppy, Rob, Hanover battling back. Tall Dark Stranger had more. Tall Dark Stranger in the Meadowlands pace with Yannick Jingra. Then Poppy, Rob, Hanover, Ali Wag Hanover, and Manticore in 147 and 2. Dave Little, I still get goosebumps when I watch that epic stretch throwdown. That is what the Meadowlands pace is all about, and that's why it's been such a great race for a long time. I mean, I just saw it on replay for about the 10th time after seeing it live last year. Poppy Rob Hanover, folks, that horse might have had three parts of a length up on Tall Dark Stranger, and to see a horse come back and show the wherewithal and the heart and the grit to come back along the inside and win a race of that magnitude, just remarkable. Will we see another historic performance tonight? You never know over the off track, but it looked like everybody was handling that surface okay. Yeah, so far so good as far as the track surface goes. Sometimes here at the Meadowlands when we get rain, it tightens up the track and makes it a little bit faster. And while I think the rains might have been a little bit excessive to expect that kind of result, it certainly doesn't look overly sloppy as the conditions were one week ago. Okay, well, Nancy Tactor, she showed up with that nice red dress in the winter circle for last year's Meadowlands pace. Let's see what she looks like at the barn. Our Jessica Auden had a sit-down chit-chat with her earlier this week. Trainer Nancy Tactor captured her first Middle Lane's pace last year with Tall Dark Stranger. This year, she sends out 1-800. Let's see what Nancy had to say about her top contender. Let's talk about this quote last season. He was lightning race with five starts and shut him down early in October. Um, he actually trained down really good. I really thought that he was uh, my best cool training down last year. And then unfortunately, he got a little chip in his left front ankle that had to be removed. Um, it was one of those things. It was kind of like a 50-50 thing. Do you remove the chip and kind of forgo some of your season? Or do you just keep racing and try to maintain it? Um, but, the, you know, after speaking to Dr. Hogan, I, you know, we came to the conclusion that uh, just removing the chip and was the best long-term um, plan for the horse. So obviously I always put the horse first. So that's what we ended up doing. And um, so he got, a, he got a little bit of a late start um, to his season. And it's a, it was a little, he was, I mean, obviously he's a huge horse. So he was a little big and immature too. So it was, you know, we got a few starts in him just for some experience. And then, um, you know, we decided that he had raced enough for the year, but he was actually never turned out. Oh. He, he stayed in training the entire, the entire winter. So, um, he has a lot of foundation on him, so. Let's fast forward to when you did qualify, and it was mid-March when you qualified him. Talk about how, um, what went behind the process of getting him, like, the schedule going, because he started at Pocono, and it can be really difficult to get these three-year-old race. Yeah, so fortunately for him, because he didn't race a lot last year, um, he fit some of the easier classes, which was nice because, you know, it allowed him kind of to have a little bit of a rookie season in the beginning of his three-year-old year where he got some experience and, you know, Yoser did a great job, you know, just teaching him to race. And let's talk about that elimination last week. He cut the mile, he finished fourth. What were your impressions on the race? You know, obviously I would have wanted the result to have been better, but I kind of feel like, you know, it was really hot when he went out on the track. Um, and I actually kind of think that Timmy maybe backed down the second quarter a little bit too much. He's not built like a Ferrari. He's built more like a Hummer. And you can't just make a Hummer go fast. You know, you need to kind of lead up to it, um, especially on the front end. You know, Brett Miller came at him pretty quickly. And um, I just don't really think he really got into here. And he's a little green still. So um, I definitely think, um, you know, if he would have kind of kept the pace going and, you know, track conditions would have been better. Post seven in the final, how do you feel going into the race looking to bring home another uh, Middle Hands Pace trophy? Um, you know, post seven doesn't bother me. You know, uh, obviously, hopefully you can work out a trip with some cover. But, I mean, Tim Tietrich, obviously a newly inducted Hall of Famer, and he's a great driver. So I'm sure if anybody can figure out a trip, it's Timmy. So um, I, I really feel confident going into the race. The horse is in good shape. He's healthy and so forth. So look forward to it. Well, best of luck. Thank you. down with trainer Nancy Tactor. She sounds pretty confident in a big bounce back performance by her Colt and she's been under a lot of pressure. This was a very expensive yearling buy at $800,000 but Dave she's such an amazing horsewoman. It's so hard to keep these horses good, straight, healthy and sound to get them to peak 
on a night like this, and she's awfully good at it. I tell you what, she sure is. And the fact is that I was talking to Nancy a couple of weeks ago, and she told me that she has 67 horses in her barn, and almost all of them are racing right now. She has so many two-year-olds in her barn that this morning at the Meadowlands at the baby races, there were only nine of them contested, and she won half a dozen. A year ago during 2020, Nancy's season was so overwhelming that there was no vote to determine who the trainer of the year was. She was a unanimous nominee by the United States Harness Riders Association and won the award in a walk. All right, Dave, it's time to turn our attention to the William Houghton Memorial coming up. Race number seven on the card tonight for over $265,000. We'll take a look at the field in just a minute here, but we want to send things again to the back paddock because Jessica Otten is with a Hall of Fame driver who will be steering the 2020 O'Brien Award winner up in Canada as the horse of the year. That's Century Pharaoh. That Buckeye? Well, here's Dave Miller with Jess. Thanks, Dave. I am joined by the Hall of Famer, David Miller. David, let's chat about a couple of your horses coming up. We'll start with Century Pharaoh, post two, 2020 Breeders' Crown Champion. We saw him in the role with Joe a couple of weeks back. He left out of there. He kind of got shuffled back a bit. But when you fed him racetrack, he really paced home nicely. Yeah, I was real happy with him. Uh, he got shuffled back, like you said, and uh, he got shook loose, and uh, he was really coming hard at the wire, and he only ended up getting beat a couple lengths. So uh, hopefully tonight I can get him away close and uh, have him within range. The big one is race nine, the $700,000 Meadowlands pace. Perfect sync took you guys on quite the ride last year, going a perfect 10 for 10. You draw the rail tonight. First, I want your impressions on how the elimination went last week. Um, I thought he raced well. Um, he really had no, no shot. I didn't think. At the time, I thought he still would have a shot, but he ended up having no shot to win the race. But I thought he raced really well to be third, and then we uh, lucked out and drew good. So, uh, you know, it's our race tonight to win or lose. Best of luck to you on the rest of the card. Thank you. Back to you, Dave. Thank you very much, Jess. Always nice to talk to a Hall of Famer, Mr. Dave Miller. Nobody has more fun out there than him, and I don't think anybody's won as much money as him over the course of his illustrious career. He'll have a big shot in that Meadowlands pace a little bit later on. You saw the graphic there with Perfect Sting, but Century Pharaoh is a horse that has competed at the top free-for-all level for years, even as a two-year-old in all of the big stakes for tr trainer Dr. Ian Moore here. Century Pharaoh, he could be one of our possible upsetters, maybe a mini upset. He's 3-1 to one right now. Yeah, you know, he certainly can be in the hunt because we have to remember a year ago, Century Pharaoh at the age of four had to butt heads throughout most of the major stakes action with Better's Wish, who was just sensational at three during Captain Crunch's campaign and then came back very good at four for Chris Ryder. Century Pharaoh for Dr. Ian Moore is certainly a big-time player with these. All right, time for a quick break. When we come back, we should have the post parade for the William Houghton Memorial, so stay with us, ladies and gentlemen gentlemen. We'll be right back. So tell us, how did Brittany Farms become a back-to-back -back breeder of the year? By breeding champions like Manchego, that's how. Sweeping both TVG finals at the Meadowlands with horses they bred and sold. Five Dan Patch trophies in two years, that's impressive. Many reasons. Two titles, one farm. It starts with the anticipation and excitement of watching championship racing on a beautiful fall weekend at the Red Mile. And on the evenings that follow, that same excitement and anticipation spills over to Phasing Tipton, where the industry gathers to buy the best yearlings the sport has to offer at the Lexington Selected Sale. Together, it's called the Lexington Experience, and it's not to be missed. Pennsylvania is sort of the pinnacle of standard bred breeding. The best stallions stand in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania has what I consider to be the premier racing and breeding program in North America. Pennsylvania breads are worth a lot of money compared to other states because of the races they can be in. Many farms have moved into the state because of our program here. This is the creme de la creme where the top horses are being bred and being raised. Racetrack Television Network brings you every race, every race. from every track, every track, on every screen, every, screen. every day. With monthly packages starting as low as $5, RTN gives you great value and access to more live HD streaming and race replays than anyone. Visit RTN.TV today to sign up and watch on almost any device, including Roku and Amazon Fire. Use promo code TRYRTN for a five-day free trial. 
see the scene here in East Rutherford, New Jersey at Meadowlands Racing and Entertainment. Looks like the rain has stopped maybe for a little while, nice. Dave Little, because we don't want to watch the Meadowlands pace, the 45th edition, in those driving raindrops as well. Hey, listen, we are on top of the post parade here for the William Houghton Memorial, a full field of 10 free-for-allers. Here's Ken Workington to introduce them to us. It's the Diamond Creek Farm post parade coming up for the William R. Houghton Memorial. Sponsored by Winback Farm. And number one is Anna Afrit with Yannick Jingra, Jeff Colifer, Tom Pollock Racing. Century Pharaoh number two with Dave Miller for Ian Moore, Radford Stable. Brassy Hanover, number three, with Dexter Dunn driving for Jeff Colifer and Pollock Racing. Backstreet Shadows, the four with Tim Tietrick in the bike for Ron Burke, Burke Racing Stable, Weber Brissemi. Larry Carr, Jerry and Teresa, Silva, Purnell, and Libby. Angers Bayama, number five, it's Andrew McCarthy for Tony Alanya and Crawford Farms Racing. Six, Alley Wag Hanover with Todd McCarthy, trained by Brett Pelling for Alley Wag Stable. Seven stars align with Joe Bongiorno, trained by Jennifer Bongiorno for Joshua J. Graber. Eight, Ruthless Hanover with Brian Sears in the bike for Tom and John Cancellari. Nine is War We Vital, Mark McDonald driving for Ron Coyne Jr., Blair Corbeil, Yolanda Fellows, and m &S Racing. Catch the Fire, number 10, Scott Suran, trained by Todd Luther for Black Magic Racing and CT Stables. Exacta Trifecta, Dime Superfecta. This starts a Survivor Pick 7 wager. The William R. Hot Memorial TVG Free For All, sponsored by Winback Farm, $265,400. And uh, Backstreet Shadow got torched last week, a tough trip. He moves inside here, so he's got to be forwardly placed right now. He is 2-1 to one on the board. The 5, Angers by Emma. He's owned, he owns Wicked Speed, and he's 3-1. to one. Uh, I like the two here, Century Pharaoh, the uh, 2020 O'Brien Award Horse of the Year in Canada, who got that shuffle uh, in uh, his most recent start in the role with Joe Division, and he draws better tonight off that acclimating mile. I think he's sitting on a real big one here. Century Pharaoh right now at 7-2, to two, Gabe. I'm in agreement with you, Ken. I like Century Pharaoh here in this spot as well. He was 9-2 to two on the morning line. Uh, comes off his most impressive effort for my money of the uh, season. He left the gate there from post 7. He was part of that tour and early pace scenario. The roll with Joe, he sat forth there through those quick early fractions, but when he shook loose through the uh, stretch, he was still rolling there late and finished up with a lot of late pace, beating only a couple of links there. He is back at 7-2, to two. so Century Pharaoh, last year's Breeders' Crown champion, is he back? Uh, for that price, I say yes. It's a very good price on the board. The horse that shocks me just a little bit up there is the four Backstreet Shadow. I thought uh, he may actually take a little more action than we're seeing right now. He was off as an odds-on favor to the role with Joe, even from post number nine. Uh, really no fault of his own there, that boss. He just got an impossible trip. Uh, worked up first up, guys, and just could not go by. A very stubborn leader, but he's back here to much improve two to one as the wager continues for race seven. Thank you very much, Gabe Pruitt. And Dave Little, one thing we know about Gabe, he would he just loves the look of that wide open betting board right now. These are the kinds of races that he lives for. Yeah, he really does. He loves to spread his tickets far and wide, and he really doesn't like to go for a lot of favorites. And that's why from time to time he hits some awfully big tickets. Let's talk about a few of the other contenders in there. Uh, Gabe touched on Backstreet Shadow. I thought he would also be a lower favorite. He's in love with Angers Bayama out of post five. He's taken plenty of action, too. I tell you what, he's picked up his game in a big way of late with four straight superb starts. He used the final quarter of 25-1 and one to catch This Is The Plan in an open event at the Big M on June the 26th, and then he came back with another big effort in the role with Joe getting second in a three-horse photo when This Is The Plan got back into the win column. Warming up right there is number 10, Catch the Fire with driver Scott Zeron, and co-owner Charlie Taylor wanted me to give a shout-out to his wife and his daughter, Vanessa and Mia. 
good luck there. Post 10 won't be easy, but Catch the Fire has been a great story over the past couple of seasons. A top-notch stakes horse. I tell you what, remember him? He finished sixth in last year's Meadowlands Pace and then went on to do some real damage, winning the Adios two weeks later at the Meadows near Pittsburgh. He's won his last two outings, both at Scioto Downs, the first in a lifetime best 147 and three, and the second in 148 and three fifth seconds. Number eight, Ruthless Hanover is a high-speed horse that comes out of a race where he was interfered with. I don't think he'll be taking back for Brian Sears out of post eight. Yeah, driver Andy McCarthy opted for Ange Bayama instead of this speedy standout from the Tom Cancellari barn. Was likely never better than he was on May the 15th when he got roughed up on the front end to the tune of a 53 and four first half before sailing home an easy winner. His break down the backside as the seven to five favorite in the graduate final was shocking to all onlookers and he could rebound at a nice price. There is a look at the four-year-old gelding for the Cancellari brothers. Tom and John put a lot of money into the business there. They run Magical Acres Farm, one of the major training centers here in central New Jersey. One more to ask you about, Dave, since we have an extra second or two. Number six, Alley Wag Hanover has been one of your favorites throughout the entire summer season here at the Big M. Can he do it? Well, he was nowhere near as good and last went fifth in the graduate final as he was in his previous four tries. He nailed Cattle Wash, the graduate champion, two starts back at 149 and one. And how about his graduate preliminary score on June the 5th? He sent the then invincible Ruthless Hanover to his first defeat of the year. The stakes record, 147 flat. Pet Rock set that in 2013. Here's Ken Workington with the call, the William Houghton Memorial. It's the first division of the Houghton Memorial, TVG free for aller sponsored by Winback Farm. For $265,000 on gate for the seventh race. The ready for start for Backstreet Shadow right now, two to one, five to two on two. Century Pharaoh, field of 10, here they come. And they're on Backstreet Shadow, Angers Bayama fires with speed as usual. Backstreet Shadow on the inside as they race to the first turn and cutting the corner is Century Pharaoh as they around that first turn. And Alley Wag Hanover now. Alley Wag Hanover by two. Off on the outside comes Backstreet Shadow. Fast early pace here. Century Pharaoh third. So Angers Bayama out sprinted fourth on the inside. Anna Afraid is fifth. That's Ruthless Hanover parked on the outside. Six followed by Brassy Hanover and Stars Align at the back. It's Catch the Fire on the outside. And War We Vital 26 flat humming right along across the back stretch back street shadow looks to back it down now as Tim Tietrich taps the brakes alley wag Hanover right on the helmet charging up his Angers Bayama activated now ruthless Hanover fourth on the outside trying to catch up to him century Pharaoh shoveled to fifth on the inside stars align gets underway six past the half then it's Anna Afrit on the inside with catch the fire underway from the back in brassy Hanover and war we vital trails 53 and 1 uh, 27 and 1 they hook up on the far turn Angers Bayam on the inside ruthless Hanover on the outside a good slugfest so it stars the line ranging up second over backstreet shadow will need racing room from the pocket spot Alleywag Hanover on the inside fifth as they turn for home Century Farrell third over looking to slingshot off a 120 amazing three quarters into the stretch drive and it's still Angers by Emma by two Backstreet Shuttles full out. Off cover, Stars Align on the outside. Up on the far outside, Brassy Hanover. Diving to the inside, Alleywag Hanover. Backstreet Shuttle, Alleywag Hanover, Alleywag Hanover. Then Backstreet Shuttle, Brassy Hanover, 147 and 1. Oh, wow, what a mad scramble finish that was in the William Houghton Memorial Division. The final time, 147 and one day, one tick off that stakes record and sneaking up the inside. Like I said before, one of your favorite horses at the Meadowlands this summer. Alleywag Hanover, certainly a horse who was on my Fox Sports pick four. And Alleywag Hanover did exactly what he did two starts ago. He sat off the action. He ducked to the inside. Tietrich drove him two back. Tonight, it was Todd McCarthy. It didn't matter who drove him. Brett Pelling had Alleywag Hanover ready to go. A lot of credit, too, for the effort put in by Backstreet Shadow, part of that early pace skirmish. He did get out, just didn't have quite the same light, late kick as Alleywag. No, he did not. And I tell you what, Alleywag Hanover was very sharp, but Backstreet Shadow just could not get to the leader at the wire. 
clearly Alleywag Hanover was much the best. And there was a horse coming on the far outside with very good pace. And that was Brassy Hanover, a big long shot for the trifecta players. That should make the uh, payout very handsome indeed. There you go. You see the numbers out on the infield totalizator board. 643, a very tight photo for fourth. I couldn't figure that out. But there is the winner. Driver Todd McCarthy. This is his first full season here since emigrating from down under, following in the footsteps of his brother Andy McCarthy here. And boy, he's had a good time driving this horse. I tell you what, to be in the top five at the Meadowlands Driver Colony and not to have been here a calendar year yet just goes to show you how talented 28-year-old Todd McCarthy is. And he drives plenty of livestock for Brett Belling, and he certainly did it tonight with Alley Wag Hanover. Just how big are the pools here in some of these races at the Meadowlands? Well, you just saw that. A total of $327,000 was bet on this seventh race alone, the William Houghton Memorial. First win for Todd McCarthy? Probably not for trainer Brett Pelling. He's done wonders with this horse for the Alley Wag Stable. Yeah, and it's uh, a very happy birthday for Brett Pelling, who is the all-time most prolific trainer in Meadowlands pace history with four victories. Here he gets the score in Division Two of the William Houghton Memorial for $265,000. And you talk about interesting decisions. How about this one? Ali Wag Hanover was consigned to be in the Tattersall's mixed sale tomorrow afternoon, but was withdrawn just a few days ago. I yeah, guess the, the, the folks behind this horse, they're just having too much fun racing him right now. I mean, absolutely. I mean, he did finish fifth for 250000 in the graduate in his last start seven days ago. And tonight they get the brass ring for 265400 They made a good decision in terms of business, hanging on to Aliwag Hanover, making only his 32nd lifetime start tonight. I think there's plenty of tread left on this tire. There you see the decorative cooler that is now draped over the Houghton winner. That is Ruth Petroselli, our winner's circle attendant, leading Alley Wag Hanover back to the winner's circle. Adam Bowden of the Diamond Creek Farm there. We talked to him earlier on the program this evening. Well, now he gets a chance to step back out there into the winner's circle and get his picture taken. One of the McCarthy kids with the colors on. Ah, very nice to very see that. Nice. Yeah, I've seen that before, I think, out at uh, the Little Brown Jug. So the happy Winter Circle celebration continues as Alley Wag Hanover continues to stand there and be a very good patient. See the photo, the commemorative photo of William Houghton over there on the right. You get that, I think, when you win this race. So oh, it's always right? good to see that as well. A couple of people from... Uh, the Diamond Creek Farm in particular in the winner's circle on the far right. I think that's Dr. Sarah Mackey, veterinarian. So we love to see our fans and supporting their horses. And we love to see kids here in the winner's circle. So the complete order of finish has now been determined. It was number 10, Catch the Fire, who ended up finishing fourth. So let's give you the prices before we throw it down to Gabe. Number six, Alley Wag Hanover, 1240. 560 and 380. Number four, Backstreet Shadow, 620 and 360. The three, Brassy Hanover, the long shot, 980 in the show spot. Your 6-4 exacta, $67.60. And your trifecta, 643, $811. Some of the other payoffs at the bottom, your dime superfecta, 64310, $251.78. Well, He's doing yeoman's work down in the winner's circle. He's been our man all night. Gabe Pruitt, who do you have? Thanks a lot, Dave. I'm standing by with the winning driver, Todd McCarthy. Todd, uh, take us through this trip. You drove him with extreme confidence, left the gate, got shuffled a bit, but loaded late. Yeah, I wasn't sort of too sure uh, where I was going to get to there early. I've never actually used him out of the gate before, but uh, he left out of there 100, and I was confident if I could keep a little bit of pace on early, we'd settle close enough uh, you know, by the half. So it worked out okay there, and we were just lucky enough to get a little break late. Any concern when you were shuffled back a bit at the top of the stretch? Uh, you know what, he got his head down early and he's, he got his plugs out, which might have helped him get out. But uh, off the turn there, he was a little hot and I was probably a little concerned there. I was you know, just trying to keep him together and uh, hope that we we're going to get a break. And how's the track with all the weather we've had? The track's held up terrific. Uh, it's obviously extremely fast, 47 mile there, and uh, we finished with plenty of pace on the end. So now full credit to the uh, Meadowlands crew here. They've done a terrific job. Congratulations, Todd McCarthy, Alley Wag Hanover. for take this so William Houghton Memorial. Thank you very much, Gabe. There's a look at Perfect Sting. Trainer Joe Holloway hasn't had a whole lot of luck yet. Maybe tonight is his night. Our passion and our promise to breed the best and sell the best 
so you can race the best. Crawford Farms, home to this year's 2020 Hamiltonian Philly champion, Ramona Hill. more stakes-winning broodmares, racehorses, and retirees. They call it the sport of kings. We call it the love of champions. From our farm to the winner's circle, share our passion. Crawford Farms. Another look at the rain falling here at Meadowlands Racing and Entertainment, home of the world's greatest harness action. Hey, listen, Perfect Sting last year, he rolled the Perfect 10. He won every single start, including one epic dead heat. So, how's it going so far at age three in 2021? Let's find out a little bit more about this regally bred colt. Jess. Place finish in his Meadowlands Pace Elimination. Perfect Sting draws the rail in the final tonight, and I had a chance to catch up with his Hall of Fame trainer, Joe Holloway. This guy has taken you on quite the ride. That included his perfect 10 for 10 season last year, capped off with the Breeders' Crown Trophy at Hoosier Park. A very exciting season. Um, it was great to go undefeated. Uh, tough thing to do at three. I really don't think anybody's going to go undefeated at three as a pacer. It's just such a, a war and so many great horses around. Um, but uh, it was a very fun time last year, especially having both his mother and the father. You did train both of his parents, like you mentioned. What are some qualities that have shined through in perfect sync for both of them? I think he has the endurance of Nikki, and he gets a lot of the speed from his mother. She was very, very fast on Talk about the, his elimination. What were your impress impressions on that? Well, it didn't work out the way he won. He never liked to lose, although he didn't lose by much. But he did pace it back half from 52 and a piece, cool in 25 and 1. Um, I didn't think we were in a bad spot, even though we were sitting there and Gendry had his way up front. Um, you know, if you'd have told me he'd come home in 25 and 1, I figured we'd go on by. Except that uh, tough when Gendry went to 25 and 3, it's tough to make up ground. How did he come out of the race? He came out very well, you know, and um, fortunately we drew the rail, and it'll be interesting when it shakes out. Uh, I've had enough bad draws at the pace, and uh, Mickey was hung three deep, four deep the last turn. So he never got inside of being three deep. So, but he had the nine hole. It's very tough out there, so. What would it mean to you to win the Meadowlands phase? It'd be great. Uh, I remember, you know, I've been at the Meadowlands every year since they've opened, but I, don't know, I saw Escort. I had to drive up from 91 Raceway and saw Escort win the first one. I mean, 
I've seen a lot of sunset, dilated, uh, nitros. I mean, you know, it, it, it didn't mean a lot. I've had a lot of bad luck in the pace. That's some god awful trips in the pace. Opening up this week. It's time for your luck to turn around. Yeah, Good there luck. you go. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jessica, and thank you to Joe Holloway for sitting down and taking a moment. You just saw a perfect sting outside his stall and barn down at Gateway Farm there. They always keep the cotton balls in his ears because he can be a little bit rambunctious. And our thanks again as well to caretaker Diane Lewis. She's been with this horse and the parents since day one. And they play such a big role, the caretakers, because when the horse sees their caretaker, they know they can be calm. They know they don't have to be unruly. Whenever they get around strangers, sometimes they can get a little rambunctious. Perfect Sting is like that. Hopefully he's going to be cool as a cucumber heading into tonight's Meadowlands pace. And that's exactly what Joe Holloway is hoping for. He is due in the Meadowlands pace. So let's quickly turn our attention now to our third live stakes event of the evening. It is the Ebby Gary Jr. Hambletonian Maturity. It's a mile and an eighth, so we're going to go a little bit of an extra distance here. Before we take a look at the uh, field, let's get to a potential Hall of Fame trainer. He's on the ballot for next season. We'll have to make that vote a little bit later on. Jess has Ron Burke of the Burke Brigade. Thanks, Dave. I am joined by trainer Ron Burke. Coming up is the Hamiltonian maturity for those four-year-old open trotters. You have its academic. When I talk with the Enik, he always raves about how versatile he is, what a pleasure he is to drive. He's got post-11 tonight. What are your thoughts on him? Yeah, we're going to have to be versatile tonight. It's uh, with the trailing position. We're going to be put in a spot that we haven't been in yet this year. But the horse I had last year as a three-year-old, we've raced him from behind. It's not a problem. He trained awesome both times this week. Off, We made him sit in the back of a pack, and he finished strong. So I don't think it'll be an issue. And maybe now with the rain-soaked track, maybe it won't play so much to the front. The big race is race nine. The Meadowlands pays for $700,000. Let's talk about your contender, Southwind Gentry. I want your impressions first on last week's elimination. He cut the mile, but you told Dave Little going into that race, you weren't really happy with him. No, I hadn't been really happy with him, and it was, even I trained him a week out, and I still was like, eh, this is just okay, but, you know, maybe we can get in the final and it gives me another week. And then, like, when Yannick crossed over, I was like, eh, just, you know, come on, be fifth, be fifth. And then, like, around the final turn, I started quitting worrying about being fifth and just trying to win the race. And uh, he was really good. And then this week training, he's back to himself. When he's more relaxed but wants to go when I ask him to go, then he's good. When he's, like, a little rank, then he doesn't seem like he wants to go when I want him to go. So I, this week trained better. I don't think the off track will help him. You know, it's going to be a much different race. You're not going to see halves in 56 today. We're going to see halves in 53. So, you know, Yannick's going to have to put him in a good spot. But from his position, you know, he has a chance to do whatever he needs to do. How did he warm up tonight? Warmed up very good. And then it was, you know, his gait was good and he's getting over the track well. And that's the thing with him. You, you know, he doesn't always do that right now. But I'm happy with him, and uh, it's the first time in a while that I actually feel good going into a race with him. Good luck on the rest of the card. Thank you very much. Back to you, Dave. Always a very gracious interview. Mr. Ron Burke, he runs the most successful, stable operation in the entire sport. He does, and uh, Ronnie has over $250 million in career earnings. That is almost double his closest pursuer. This is certainly a guy who deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, and as Dave mentioned, he's on the ballot, and he's going to get in next year, no doubt about that. I know he's got my vote, he's got your vote, and he will have many votes. So, folks, we welcome you back on camera here at the top of the hour here, hour number two of live harness action here on Fox Sports to on Meadowlands Pace Night. We hope you've enjoyed the first couple of races that we have brought you so far. Coming to you from our inside first floor, Sam McKee Memorial Broadcast Set. Proud to be your host, Dave Brower, and I'm more proud to be joined by Hall of Famer Dave Little. Dave, it's been a fun but fast first hour here on live television. It really is quite remarkable when you consider the off-going that we've had. We just had a mile going 147-1. and one. That's the fastest mile of the year in the sport. Three horses have done it. First were Captain Barbosa. Then was Cattle Wash, and of course, we just now saw Alleywag Hanover stop the beam in the same 147 and 1. Amazing speed, Dave, given the conditions. I know, unbelievable on the sloppy track as the rain has continued to fall. But Ken Workington just sent us a message. He said, at least the winds are calm. Again, happy to be joined with you tonight here at, live at the Meadowlands in East Rutherford, New Jersey. 
We're going to go to break shortly, but first of all, we'll take a look at the Meadowlands Pace Eliminations a little bit later on. And you heard Ron Burke talk about Southwind Gendry. He seems pretty confident, too. Yeah, and Southwind Gendry is a horse who was, uh, had a great year last year at two. But last week when he won his elimination, he went to the front end and let it every call, which is not really his best way to go. What was most surprising is that a horse of his caliber with his resume went to the gate at odds of 10 to 1 and paid $22 and change. A lot of people were smiling at the end of that elimination. All right, well, one thing I can tell you, a lot of dreams come true on Hamiltonian Day. And as we get ready to send things to break here, Last year, Ramona Hill put a beating on the boys. I know you remember it. We show it every night here at the Meadowlands or whatever. And she's back to try it again. She will be coming up in this Hamiltonian maturity. And we're going to take a quick time out. We're going to take a break. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, Trotters on the track here at the Meadowlands. Team Orange Crush, the New Jersey-based husband and wife stable of Andy and Julie Miller, are one of Harness Racing's most successful stakes winners. Andy has won over 9,000 races and $130 million. Julie has trained over 2,000 winners. They captured the 2020 Mohawk Million with Dan Patch Award winner Venerate. They were 27-1 to upsetters in the Kentucky Philly Futurity with Love a Good Story. Developers of Millionaire Trotters and New York-based stallions like Devious Man, now standing at Blue Chip Farms, and Metz Hall, standing at Winback Farm. Join a winning combo, Team Orange Crush. Hickory Lane Horse Farm does not breed for just the Buckeye State, but for the national level. Hickory Lane bred world champion, it's academic, who won all three legs of the graduate series at the Meadowlands and is also by our stallion, Uncle Peter. We are proud of Charlie May, bred by our sire McArdle, who is now racing against the best on the grand circuit. Hickory Lane Stallion What the Hill swept the next generation stakes at Scioto with Be My Baby Now and Chulo. Pennsylvania is sort of the pinnacle of standard bred breeding. The best stallions stand in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania has what I consider to be the premier racing and breeding program in North America. Pennsylvania breads are worth a lot of money compared to other states because of the races they can be in. Many farms have moved into the state because of our program here. This is the creme de la creme where the top horses are being bred and being raised. The quality goes in and the name goes on. Tactor, Nancy Tactor, 2020 Trainer of the Year, an $8 million season and 31% victories. Metal Lands Pace winner and Horse of the Year, Tall Dark Stranger, Hamiltonian Oaks champion, Sorella, Dan Patch Award and TVG Mares Open Pace winner, Kissing in the Sand, and the incomparable world champion, Manchego. The rising star has risen. Hop on board the Nancy Tactor Stable Express. Trifecta, Superfecta, and pick three. It's the E.T. Gary Jr. Hamiltonian Maturity. Our top pick here is the Mayor Three Hypnotic, a graduate division winner in 150 and three back on June 5th and grinded gallantly uh, for second in the slop uh, in the uh, graduate final. Draws better here to work out her patented stock and pop trip with uh, Brian Sears, Marcus Melander, Corrent Incorporated. The uh, connections of last year's winner from post 13, Jim Panzi. 12 ready for money right now at 5 to 2, and we'll add the 1. Next level stuff at 37 to 1. So, Gabe, we're going 3, 12, 1. How about that number? Ken, I'm in agreement with you here, and uh, you're looking at Hypnotic on the monitor right there. She looks very nice and professional on the track. You see her ears up. She's very alert here, scoring down as the rains continue as we lead into this Hamiltonian maturity with $400,000 on the line. Can I think Brian Sears is going to drive her a little more aggressive tonight? Last week, he tried her off the pace, but he had a mid-pack post. I think tonight he's going to try and zip past the 1 and 2 because we've got two trotters here in the second tier, numbers 11 and 12. And I think with that post edge, it's going to do a lot here for Hypnotic. We know she is a known commodity, the four Ramona Hill. We're taking a look at her on the monitor right now. She's a short price. She's a very talented mare. She's 12 of 19 in her career, but she's been a little off her game of late. Her last qualifier, she was a little better, but at 5-2, to two, I'm just not convinced. She's back to the Ramona Hill we all know and love. And then you toss on the favorite, ready for money. He's going to have that tough second-tier start. It's just so many things can go wrong when you have post-12 here at the Meadowlands. I'm just not willing to sign up for a short price on a horse that's going to start from such a tough slot. So it's hypnotic for me as well, guys, as we get set for this uh, mile and eighth trot. Thanks so much, Gabe Pruitt. Very insightful analysis out there from ground.
of the horses. We're going to race an added distance, and it's a big overflow field. Please explain all of that. Well, the fact of the matter is that when you have a trot race where there are 12 horses, you have to extend the race to a mile and an eighth. The way the stake is written, if there are 10 horses that enter, then there are 10 noses on the gate and they go a mile. If there are 13 horses entered, you'd have two divisions, one with six and one with seven. This happened to fall right on 12, meaning that there are 10 noses on the gate and two trailers. They add the eighth of a mile so that it's a little more of a fair start, especially for the horses in the second tier, so that they might be able to work themselves into the race just a little bit better. When you start a 12-horse field from the regular start-finish line, you're into that turn so quickly, it's awfully tough for the horses from posts 11 and 12 to get close enough to really threaten. At least with that extra eighth of a mile, they have a little more time before that first turn occurs. Hence, that's why we have the added distance, and hence, that's why we have a dozen horses behind the gate. In this race's history, mares have beaten the boys twice. Ariana G, Hanalore Hanover, and out of our field of 12, there are five mares in here. You tell me which ones you think can pull the upset. Well, I'll tell you right now that uh, Hypnotic AM is a horse who I have my eye on and is my top pick has raced very well in no less than five straight starts after a respectable fourth-place finish in her seasonal debut, losing the Next Level Stuff, who was the next great thing at that time in the Miss Versatility Series. Ramona Hill, can she come back with a top effort, adding the trotting hopples for trainer Tony Alanya after her victory, of course, last August in the Hamiltonian? Another mare with a shot to win this race? Well, you know, it's, it's kind of tough to say. Can Next Level Stuff work out the kind of close-to-the-action trip that she so good at she missed the neck two starts back to win Dove's Cry in a mile that went in 151 and four. So Dave, I think those are the mares who are to basically have the best chance to do it. Sorella, of course, last year's Hamiltonian Oaks champion, leaves from post position five. But right now, she's not at the top of her game for Nancy Tactor. There is a great look. He just went off the screen there. Number 12, Ready for Money, who went the race of his life last week in the graduate final. Guess who trains Ready for Money? That would be Nancy Tactor. Here's what she told me about this horse tonight. Couldn't have been any better last week. His French pedigree should be perfect for the mile and an eighth. He's just so strong. Tietrich will just need to work out a good trip, and I'm sure he will finish well. I tell you what, Tietrich said in an interview that he was happier to have post 12 than he is to have po than he would have to have post 11. And I can understand why. The horse who's drawn post 11. Ability. At least Tietrich has some options with ready for money, and he's going to hope to get him into a covered trip. And I'll ask you about one more as they're getting ready to go. Look for number 10, Beads, at the start. He's a temperamental horse that sometimes acts up, but if he trots, he's got speed. He ripped off three wins and four tries until he went off stride while racing from the back of the pack in the graduate final as the 9-5 to five public choice. If he minds his matters, watch out. Here's Ken Warkerton with the call of the Gary Jr. Hamiltonian maturity. For $400,000, the E.T. Gary Jr. Hamiltonian Maturity, four-year-old open trot, part of the Grand Circuit, Harness Racing's finest. A mile and one-eighth, field of 12. It's academic, ready for money at two-to-one in the second tier. Five-to-two action on the mare, three hypnotic. The post-position advantage here. It's a field of 12, swing off the turn, ready for a mile and one-eighth. Here they come. And they're off and to rotting in the Hamiltonian maturity. And it's a cavalry charge here. Sorella's out fast with Abs Attitude Express. Gangster Hanover on the outside getting involved. Sermon is fourth. Cut wide there was Beads with early speed. Then it's Hypnotic on the inside, followed by Next Level Stuff. In between horses, Hypnotic trying to advance now around Hypnotic on the inside, next level stuff on the rail is stuffed in early. Ready for money, stuck near the rear of the field and moving up. Then it's Get Legs. Near the rear of the field is Ramona Hill next to last and played tricks on me. The trailer, hot quarter of 26 flat. Moving well here, it's Gangster Hanover on the inside and reaching up his beads on the outside. And ready for money on the outside is gaining ground third and looking to threaten the leader across the back stretch already. On the inside, Abs Attitude Express saves ground in fourth position. That's a sermon on the outside in fifth. Hypnotic is following Sermon on the outside, sixth past the half. A shuffle for Sorella on the inside. Then it's Get Legs. Next level stuff is stride for stride with that one. It's Academic is next. Then Ramona Hill still near the rear of the field and play tricks on me. Still 12th and last. 55 was the half. 
for Ready for Money. The graduate champion, and Tietrick has seized control and leads it by a length and a quarter with about three eighths out. Beads on the inside, racing second after a tough early going in this one. On the inside, Gangster Hanover getting shoveled back, and here comes Hypnotic. The mayor Hypnotic is going three wide as they move off the turn. Sermon is right there, fifth now, fourth between horses. It is ready for money and ready for a challenge. Hypnotic on the outside. 123 and one was three quarters. They're in the stretch. It's ready for money on the inside, ready for battle, ready for money. Beads looks to shake loose late, charging late, hypnotic on the outside, and a late move from Sorella from way out of it. Inching in is Beads between horses, hypnotic on the outside, Beads and the Buckeye, Beads and Dave Miller, Beads, then hypnotic, ready for money, and Sorella, 204 and 4 for the mile and 1 8. Another great finish here, 2.04 and 4, the time for the mile and an eighth, a couple of ticks off the stakes record set by J.L. Cruz. We had lots of action early, a few lead changes as we expected, Dave Little, and I tried to warn you, Beads, if he stayed trotting, would be a factor. I tell you what, he really got me this time. Beads, when he went off stride in his most recent effort, I figured that he might not be primed for his best effort tonight, but he certainly was. He went park past the quarter in 26, he settled in along the inside, and then really got going against what I thought he could do. Instead of having to ha race on the front end, Beads came from off the lead, split rivals late, and won for fun in an absolutely magnificent performance. Congratulations to trainer Per Engblom. And a great effort by one of the mares, Hypnotic AM. She was forced into that preliminary three-wide move on the final turn. Maybe that just sapped her a little bit in those final few yards. Yeah, I tell you what, she just kind of ran out of gas because I thought she had enough momentum to get the victory. But because Beads have been, have been managed to save ground after working out a pocket trip to the half, sitting in behind Ready for Money, who was aggressively handled by Tietrich, that gave Beads just enough of a breather to be able to outkick Hypnotic AM to the wire. You see the infield tote board. You see the judges, stewards, have lit the inquiry sign. We don't have a, a, any information on that yet. When Ken Workington does, he will tell us. So number 12, Ready for Money. We said it was going to be a long road to haul from that outside post. He was wide early used hard and he just got a little tired. I tell inquiry you what, sign Tietrich is was absolutely up. Inquiry magic. here, stretch run, inquiry, looking at the stretch run of race eight, inquiry sign, continue to hold on to all tickets. There you hear Ken Workington. He gets the phone call from the judges up there in the announcer's booth. So we'll try to get some replay footage when we figure out exactly what they were looking at. I know it did get a little tight there down in late stretch, and apparently that's why the judges want to take another look at it. Yeah, there might have been horses ducking in. There might have been horses ducking out. But clearly to me, it looked like Beads was clear by, by splitting rivals. So I don't suspect that the uh, inquiry uh, regards the winner of the race. We were talking about Ready for Money and Tim Tietrick. Tietrick somehow how magically pulled a rabbit out of a hat and had his horse in contention in the early stages move to the lead at the half in what has amounted to a rated 55 seconds flat. He just couldn't sustain and was very, very good tonight. You heard me talk about Beads as being a somewhat temperamental horse. Well, look at his headgear. They cover everything up so that he can't see anything. Now, here we go. We've got to look at what the judges are looking at. Right now, they're at the they're midway on the final turn, I believe, so it's going to possibly take place a little bit later on. There you see the big three-wide move by Hypnotic AM. Brian Sears on the outside. But right here, Dave Miller probably feels like he's still sitting on a handful of horse. It's just a matter of whether he was going to have time to get out. Yeah, you know, you got to find room in the stretch of the Meadowlands. And very often from the pocket, you do. So maybe Miller was just waiting for that moment. And when he had to split horses, that means that you're in a little bit of tight quarters, especially with Hypnotic AM racing up on the outside and closing quite well. I don't really see where the, in where the infraction or possible infraction might have occurred here as the judges continue to roll film and look at the running of the eighth race. This is on the back stretch, and you did see some jockeying for position, I guess, towards the back of the pack. But I will agree with you while you were talking I'm watching very closely I haven't seen anything yet that would warrant any sort of a disqualification ready for money got to the lead beads is nicely firmly in that second spot nobody is inside those pylons which is a violation of the racing rules and here we go same view
Breaker day from between rivals. That was the number nine horse, Sermon and Casper Fogé, going off stride. And they took number seven, it appears, Gangster Hanover, who was racing along the rail with Okus Fonsted with them. So I'm pretty sure that that's the incident that we're looking at. Number three, Hypnotic AM, had to go around the nine, and that caused the nine to go off stride. I don't know if the three interfered with the nine, however. Uh, and guys, the- we have no violations here. No reason for any action to be taken. The result will stand 10-3, 12-5. No placings. Thank you very much, Ken Warkington. We're glad that is over with. So that means Beads is now the official winner of the Ebby Gary Jr. Hamiltonian Maturity. He can come back to the winner's circle there for his Hall of Fame driver. That's the guy wearing the purple in the sulky seat, Dave Miller. That's trainer Per Engblom in the yellow and black. And boy, he has been a master of patience here with this horse to get him to peak and perform very well over the last few months. I know he pulled the front shoes again tonight. We saw that on the equipment changes earlier. And one condition of the Hamiltonian and the Hamiltonian maturity is you are not allowed to race on the diuretic Lasix. So Bede's got it done without the Lasix. Yeah, so apparently, uh, you know, he is a bit uh, of a horse who bleeds, but tonight he obviously raced more than comfortably enough to get the victory in 204 and 4 for the mile and an eight. He was kind of a head case. He's come back much, much better at age four for Per Engblom, and he could have a super season. He's won four of seven this year. I know, it's a spectacular finish here. We're going to have to take a quick timeout. We'll have prices for you on the other end of the break here. We're going to have a special visit with New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy, and they're going to do it right here from our chairs on the inside set. Gabe Pruitt will have that. Let's take a quick timeout here at the Meadowlands on Fox Sports 2. going for big money last year and this year but uh, today he, he did his own race and he did it well
and you had to be very confident turning for home after that type of trip. Oh, for sure. But actually, he never won from behind before. This is the first time he's winning that uh, he's not been on the lead. So, But uh, the trip was great. Good time to uh, pick a new dimension for Beach. Congratulations, appearing on all the connections. We'll be back right after this. Top down for race eight. It's next level stuff. Got a huge night medal in space night. I am Gay Pruitt. I'm very pleased and I'm very honored to be joined by the governor of the state of New Jersey, Governor Phil Murphy. Governor, it's so great to have yourself and the first lady, Tammy, back with us here on our biggest night. Greg, it's, it's a real treat, Gabe, to be here. Here, uh, Weather's a little bit tough right now, but it is a real treat. The Meadowlands is an iconic track not just in New Jersey, but in America. I'm thrilled to be here. Well, we're great. We're happy to have you as well. And uh, I can attest the weather's not perfect tonight, but that's <laughs> okay. Uh, you have been such a big supporter of the racing industry in the state of New Jersey since you were first elected in 2017. Why do you feel like these industries are so important to the state of New Jersey? I'll tell you, Gabe, there's a number of reasons. Uh, it is a huge economic driver, probably a billion dollars to our GDP, a hundred million dollars of uh, revenues for the state thousands of jobs, open space, and the fun of it, right? The fun of, uh, of, of being able to participate uh, in, in this industry. For all those reasons and many more, uh, I'm honored to be supporting it. And we're so happy to have your support as well. In 2019, you signed the $100 million appropriation for over a five-year period to the racing and breeding industry here in the state of New Jersey. Are you pleased so far with that impact of the investment by the state? No, huge. It's a game changer. If you speak to, if you look at handles, if you look at the breeding of standard uh, mares, if you look at job creation, uh, attendance, uh, we, we are in a place right now, folks maybe at home can't realize this, this place is hopping. It so it's a, it's a combination of all the above. And as I mentioned earlier, it's a preservation as well of open space. Uh, it's a win, win, win. You know, I'm assuming your great job in your first term is going to lead you to a resounding re-election victory. How likely are you to continue to support the racing industry with that appropriation moving forward? Yeah, I don't take re-election for granted for one second, as you can imagine. So we, we, A lot we of bad predictions on this set as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not placing any bets here tonight, but I'll tell you, I'm, I'm uh, running like I'm 10 points down. Conceptually, uh, passionately, we are, we will continue to be there for this industry. This industry is too important. There's too much at stake, uh, both in breeding, in handle, in jobs, in attendance, in open space for all the above reasons. New Jersey's all in in this industry. Well, Governor, I just want to say again, on behalf of all of us here at the Meadowlands, on behalf of all of us in the state of New Jersey, Gabe, I am joined by driver Brett Miller, who is going to be driving Charlie May in the $700,000 Meadowlands Pace Final. Let's go back to this colt last year. What a nice horse he is for the connections, a homebred by Don Tiger. Um, let's talk about that year, seven of nine on the season, two-year-old male pacer of the year, two-year-old Ohio Sire Stakes. What a nice horse to be involved with. Yes, absolutely. He's, he's a tremendous colt. And uh, what's kind of funny about the situation with me is I chose off this horse twice 
and uh, I've been so fortunate to get to drive him. Um, I chose off of him his first two qualifiers and then got to watch him beat me up, and then, uh, then I end up getting the drive. It's been a great, it's been great. Let's talk about, you know, staking this horse because he was supplemented into the Meadowlands space. Did they call you at all over the winter and ask you what your thoughts were from his two-year-old season to his three? Yeah, the, you know, they wanted some input. And, uh, I mean, he surely felt like he was grand circuit material to me. And, uh, you know, I said, you know, I said if it was up to me, I would do it. So he, he tried the grand circuit on the messenger two weeks in a row, second in the Olymp, second in the final. And he finished up both of those miles nicely with lots of pace. Yeah, yeah, he, he's a very nice colt. He can race any way. Um, he got around Yonkers. He got around Yonkers really good, a little better than I thought he would. And because uh, he, I felt like he was maybe a bigger track horse, even though he's not a big horse. But he got around there good. Let's talk about that elimination last week. You get away middle of the pack. You move quickly against 1-800. You just got beat at the end. How did you think he handled the move to the mile track? B very good, very good. You know, I, I thought he would be very good here, and he was. Um, you know, I first up. Even though it was a late first up, that really wasn't where I wanted to be. But the Colt, not, the Colt seems to be like where nothing bothers him. Post nine, no luck from the, the draw there. Is this horse handy enough for you to get him off of the gate? Yeah, in my opinion, he, he can do anything you want him to do. It's just a matter of uh, what kind of trip we get from uh, <laughs> the quarter on. You came close in 2016 with Racing Hill. Best of luck tonight. Thank you so much. Back to you, Dave. Thanks very much, Jess. Always pleasure to see a former Meadowlands driving champion, Super Brett, we call him Brett Miller, back with us in the Garden State. And I'll tell you what, he has a huge chance to pull the upset with a really nice Ohio bred colt, oh, uh, Charlie May. You know, as I said earlier in the night, there's going to be a lot of action into that first turn, and some of the power is leaving from the outside, N namely with Charlie May from post nine and American Courage from post ten. This is not going to be a walk in the park for anybody from the inside to go wire to wire. And Brett Miller is a guy who Say just that. missed with Racing Hill in the 2016 Meadowlands pace. Yeah, I, we can't wait. And hey, listen, guess what? Our main event is next. It's very pleasurable to hear from our Governor Phil Murphy here in New Jersey. And I tell you what, at least for us in the sport of all of horse racing, both standard bred and uh, thoroughbred as well, he's just been such a great supporter of us. Yeah, uh, Governor Murphy and the New Jersey State Legislature has really been behind all the goings on here at the Meadowlands with sports betting and racing. Great supporters of everything to drive the financial machine so that harness racing can continue and support all of the agricultural effects that go along with harness racing and thoroughbred racing for yeah. that matter. I should have told him he's got my vote. I don't yes. have to worry about that and I'm sure he has yours as well. So let's take a quick look before we uh, get another time out in there at the Meadowlands Pace Field. Again, this is the 45th edition. The purse this year, Dave, $700,000. We've got a field of 10 finalists here and I'll give you Or will one of these other horse, oh, Hello Blue, being the favorite in this race? It wouldn't have been out of the question for Southwind Gendry, but I still felt that the betting public would stick with Perfect Sting because he has the better resume. Everybody remembers he was 10 for 10 a year ago, and we don't quite have the insider money betting on a Meadowlands pace night that we might on a regular Friday or Saturday night here at the Meadowlands. So Perfect Sting being the favorite doesn't surprise me one bit. As I glance down and see 1-800 at 4-1, to one, even though I don't particularly care for 1-800's chances given how he raced last week, 4-1 to one is a pretty good price given the fact that he went 148 two starts back. Okay, favorites have a very good history in the Meadowlands pace, winning exactly half, 22 out of the 44, so we all know that is 50%. Well was so good with that 52 and 2 back half in his last win here at the Meadowlands. All right. We're going to take it to break. Here's a look at long shot. A buck a bed Hanover. Andy McCarthy would try to win the Meadowlands pace. He looks ready. It starts with the anticipation and excitement of watching championship racing on a beautiful fall weekend at the Red Mile. And on the evenings that follow, that same excitement and anticipation spills over to Phasing Tipton, where the industry gathers to buy the best yearlings the sport has to offer at the Lexington Selected Sale. Together, it's called the Lexington Experience, and it's not to be missed. 
Pennsylvania is sort of the pinnacle of standard bred breeding. The best stallions stand in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania has what I consider to be the premier racing and breeding program in North America. Pennsylvania breads are worth a lot of money compared to other states because of the races they can be in. Many farms have moved into the state because of our program here. This is the creme de la creme where the top horses are being bred and being raised. Team Svanstedt is a successful horse family from Sweden. Akis Svanstedt and his wife Sarah moved to the U.S. in the fall of 2013 and operate a world-class stable in New Jersey and Florida. With prestigious wins in the Hambletonian and International Trot, Team Svanstedt are a dominant presence during stake season. Team Svanstedt world records have been commonplace, with a fabulous team producing champions like Six Pack, Plunge Blue Chip, Resolve, and Sebastian K. For more, contact Svanstedt Stable or follow Team Svanstedt on Facebook and Twitter. Racetrack Television Network brings you every race, every race from every track, every track on every screen, every screen, every day. With monthly packages starting as low as $5, RTN gives you great value and access to more live HD streaming and race replays than anyone. Visit RTN.TV today to sign up and watch on almost any device, including Roku and Amazon Fire. Use promo code TRYRTN for a five-day free trial. One, 19 and one. Some beach somewhere leads it by two. Artificial tips to the outside, trying to get to him. An eighth of a mile away. Some beach somewhere under pressure. Artificial up to his wheel on the outside. Some beach somewhere full out. Artificial, a desperate lunge on the outside. Artificial, some beach somewhere at the line. Artificial, 147. World record upset in the pace. Ah, the voice of the late Sam McKee, our dear, dear friend here, 2008. What a magical moment in Meadowlands Pace history. And Dave Little, many harness lifers, you and me included, think that may be one of the greatest races of all time. No question about that. And the fact of the matter is, I can take that one step further. That was without question the greatest Meadowlands Pace of all time. What excitement was offered by our great friend, the late Sam McKee, as art official gunned down some beach somewhere, sending that standout out to his only career defeat. Unbelievable. A lot of people think some beach somewhere was one of the greatest horses of all Absolutely. time, and it would be very, very difficult to argue with them. So can we make a little more harness racing history tonight with our 10 finalists here? We've got uh, probably a couple of minutes before they step out onto the track, and we will uh, learn their names. And what a field it is, Dave. Uh, perfect sting holding, but drifting up a little bit on the odds board to nine to five. Five to one is the price on Southwind Gendry right now. Gendry, of course, that's his name. He came from Game of Thrones. I'm yeah. not a big Game of Thrones fan, but I did read that in my research. Yeah, yeah. And Southwind Gendry certainly is a horse who uh, can beat horses over the over the head with a stone when he's at his absolute best. Southwind Gendry's a limb. Here we see him turning for home after raiding a middle half. Expert job by Van Yannick Jingra going that middle half in 56 and two fifth seconds. That leaves more than enough in the tank to get the job done. But well, you can see a couple of horses coming at him, and they're coming at him very well. Lawless Shadow is going to outlast Perfect Sting to get second. That might be a long shot people would be interested in using here. Number five with Mark McDonald driving. He is the pride of Prince Edward Island. Yes, he is, and he will be aggressive, we think, with Lawless Shadow. But Southwind Gendry, well, maybe not 10 to 1, but you're getting 6 to 1 right now. That was a look at elimination number two. We'll get to elimination number one but after the Meadowlands Pace Post Parade so without further ado Ken Warkington introduced the field three-year-old open pacers on the track for the Meadowlands Pace Final the 45th edition 45th edition for $700,000 Perfect Sting, a three-year-old son of Always Be Mickey, Dave Miller, Hall of Famer, driving for Hall of Famer trainer Joe Holloway for Brittany Farms and Valdor Farms, the Picture Perfect 10 for 10 Dan Patch Award winner from last year. Hall of Fame trainer Joe Holloway looking for his first pace trophy. Dave Miller looks for his second. Number two, Hello Baloo. 
Scott Siran picks up the drive for Eddie Dennis and owner Eric Good of Denton, Maryland. The, the son of Sweet Lou shocked the world at more than 80 to 1 with a mile of his life, a 149 2 elimination upset, earning his inside post tonight for the money man, Scott Siran. Three is Chase H. Hanover. Brian Sears, the Hall of Famer, driving for Scott Cox, a co owner with Jason Ash. This son of 2013 Pace champion Captain Treacherous equaled a world record as a freshman on a half mile track. Hall of Famer Brian Sears, the White Knight, goes for the Pace Grand Slam. Southwind Gendry, Yannick Jingra driving and looking for a Pace repeat. Ron Burke looking for his first Pace trophy. Burke Racing Stable, Phil Calera, Knox Services, Jerry and Teresa, Silva, Purnell, and Libby, 10 to 1 elimination upsetter, Pennsylvania Sire Stakes champion and matron stakes winner as a freshman. Yannick Jingra again won his second last year, second pace trophy with a horse of the year, Tall Dark Stranger. The five lawless shadow with Mark McDonald, Dr. Ian Moore, the trainer and co owner with RG McGroup Limited, Montreal great, Montreal Canadians great, Serge Savard, and Frank Cannon of Sanford, Florida. O'Brien Award winner finished a fast closing second in his elimination. Dr. Ian Moore trained his great sire, Shadow Play, who is also co owned by Montreal Canadians Hall of Famer Serge Savard. The six is Rocky Road Hanover with Dexter Dunn, our leading driver, Tony Alanya, Riverview Racing, Brad Grant, Kenneth Jacobs, Ploof Head, and VJ Stable. Another son of Pace champion, Captain Treacherous, who was trained by Tony Alanya, two time driver of the year. That is, of course, Dexter Dunn and the Big M's leading driver, who finished second in 2019 with Better's Wish. The seven is 1-800 Hall of Famer, newly minted Hall of Famer, Tim Tietrich in the bike for Nancy Tactor, Brixton Medical, and Nancy Tactor is a co-owner. 1-800, a son of 2008, runner-up, some beach somewhere. Nancy Tactor trained the 2020 pace winner and horse of the year, tall, dark stranger, and Tim Tietrich goes for a half dozen pace trophies. The eight is a buck a bet Hanover with the thunder from down under. Andrew McCarthy, Tony Alanya trains for Crawford Farms Racing, Alanya Racing, Jablonski Held Stable, and Barbara Wienick. A buck a bet Hanover from the first crop of 2016 standout betting line completes the one two punch for Tony Alanya. Andrew McCarthy looking for his first pace trophy. Crawford Farms, they were part owners of last year's pace winner, Tall Dark Stranger. The nine, Charlie May, Brett Miller for Steve Carter and owner Don Tiger, who is also the breeder of this gelding by McArdle, Ohio-based gelding by 2002 pace runner-up McArdle. Brett Miller won the Big M driving title here in 2016 and 2017 and equaled the record for wins on a single card with eight. He was second in the 2018 pace with Racing Hill. And number 10, American Courage. Matt Kikaley will drive. Travis Alexander trains. Fiddler's Creek Stables, West Bloomfield, Michigan. Son of American Ideal, who won his first four starts this season, including the Messenger Stakes. For Cancer Survivor and trainer Travis Alexander, Matt Kikaley, he was second for post 10 in 2018 with long shot Dorso Duro Hanover. That's the field for the Meadowlands Pace for $700,000. Our price play is the five, Lawless Shadow at seven to one. The O'Brien Award winner who sat the pocket and just missed a Southwind Gendry with a sharp 25 and two last week. A chance to fire out, try to employ his similar uh, stalking tactic here. Superb acclimating mile in one of the most wide open pace finals in years. Gabe, I went five over one, four. Good luck. One thing I can definitely agree with you, Ken, this is, uh, in my mind, the most wide open metal and space final that I've seen in many, many years. How about this, Ken Morganton? When is the last time that the one of the elimination winners was the longest shot on the board? Hell of a he's up there at 22 to one. He won one of two eliminations for this race last week and right now being overlooked and disrespected uh, again on the board. So that is a huge price here. I'm gonna go all the way outside here to American Courage. You think post 10, Mission Impossible? Not so fast in the Meadowlands pace. Four post 10 winners. Last was the Pandarosa back in 1999. It's actually the co-third winningest post of this race in 44 edition of the Meadowlands pace. So I'm going to try American Courage. It's just a race that I refuse to take a short price. I certainly think Perfect Sting is the horse to beat. He has done nothing wrong last year's champion, but I am going to try a big long shot. American Courage, I think he's going to be aggressively handled here in what is a wide open crapshoot, our signature event. How's it look from the back, Jess? 
It looks great. You know, I wish it wasn't raining, but that's something we have to deal with. This is a wide open event for the $700,000 Meadowlands Pace Final. You have Hella Baloo from Post 2. He pulled the huge upset. I talked to Scotty Z last night. He has driven this Colt before. He was super happy to get the drive back. He starts from to Post 2, like I mentioned. I talked to Ron Burke earlier about Southwind Gentry. He warmed up good. He had a good week. But I'm going to go with Perfect Sting. I've always been a fan of this horse. He came up back half in 52-2 and two last week, 25-1 and one at the end of it. We talked to David earlier he said he wasn't going to quite get there but he was happy with the way he performed it's his race tonight to win or lose they've got the rail it can be tricky but i have all faith in perfect sting let's send it to the daves for their picks thank you very much jessica hey listen this part of the summer stakes season dave little is called the championship meet and this year it honors the late joe defrank hall of famer this race the meadowlands pace was his idea and led to some of the biggest stakes races big money it all started with Joe. Yeah, he was our legendary longtime racing secretary, and Joe was the creator of the Meadowlands Pace, and I'm sure that he's looking down from above very proud tonight. When Joe initiated the first Meadowlands Pace in 1977, it went for a then unheard of purse of $425,000, and the legacy of the Meadowlands Pace continues to this day as eight of the last Meadowlands Pace winners out of the last 21 years have gone on to be named Horse of the Year. Yes, definitely a man to remember. Here's another little tidbit and someone we should recognize. The leading driver of winners in the Meadowlands Pace is Hambletonian Society President John Campbell. He won it seven times and 40 years ago today, he drove in his first pace. He drove in his first pace, but of course, a, a more memorable for John was his first win in the pace, and that came with Hilarion from post position 10. I remember watching that uh, footage very recently. Of course, John, with $299 million in lifetime earnings, is the all-time leading driver in harness racing history. As we watch the horse continue to warm up and score down before they go to the gate. A guy that's won a lot of paces in such a short time is the new Hall of Famer, Tim Tetrick, the bionic man. He's looking for his six. Yeah, and he won five in an 11-year stretch, so he was clearly red hot. He hasn't won it since 2017, but he certainly could get back into the win column with Nancy Tactor's 1-800 right now. They're, they are the second choice at 4-1 to one in the wagering. Your Come attention, start. please. Oh. We have a horse in the paddock for a shoe repair number five lawless shadow lawless shadow in the paddock for a shoe repair so we will have a slight delay thank you Ken that'll give us a little more time to dazzle you with some tidbits here uh, as well Tim Tetrick his last win 2017 with Huntsville and if Nancy Tactor were to win this it would be three straight for the ladies. Yes, because uh, Linda Toscano pulled off an upset three years ago with Best in Show, who won it from off the pace with Brian Sears driving. That was a big surprise. Of course, last year, no surprise, as favorite Tall Dark Stranger won. Hall of Famer Linda Toscano had Best in Show. Is Nancy Tactor on the trajectory for a Hall of Fame career? Well, you might want to give that a little time, but she was the unanimous trainer of the year for 2020. Amongst our 10 finalists, four trainers are making their Meadowlands pace debut I wanted to touch on number 10 American Courage no love from the post gods as we see Lawless Shadow getting a new shoe yeah and uh, you know as Lawless Shadow uh, gets his shoe repair we're talking American Courage and Travis Alexander in the weeks leading up to the Meadowlands pace I spoke with him just about every week and he had ultra confidence in this three-year-old son of American ideal things didn't go his way last week in the Meadowlands pace elimination after he was absolutely dominant winning both his messenger elimination and and final at Yonkers Raceway. Can he make it happen tonight from post position 10? He's going to have to pace an awfully good opening quarter to get involved. Purple Haze Standard Bread Adoption Program was created in 2018 by Wanda Policini. Purple Haze provides training to transition into new careers and finding homes. Horses are started with groundwork and then ridden in an arena before going on. Horses at Purple Haze are evaluated and adopted out based on abilities and temperament. If you have a horse that you care about, or if you're looking for a great pleasure horse, please contact Purple Haze Standard Bread Adoption Program.
We welcome you back, everybody. Fox Sports 2 live coverage of the 45th Meadowlands pay $700,000 on the line as we wait for the blacksmith in the back paddock to tack on a new shoe for number five, Lawless Shadow. It gives us to look at a few of the other contenders, Dave Little. And uh, we haven't given our picks yet. We'll do that in just a minute. But uh, hella blue, we have to give him a little bit of a mention here. Eddie Dennis, a guy from Delaware. He's got a Meadowlands pace finalist and 26 to one. I tell you what, he won a week ago at 80 to one, but he, saw, he looked like a four to five shot the way he did it. Moving well out of the seven hole, getting a pocket trip, swerving from the three hole late, and getting up with a 25 and four final quarter. Hella Blue should not be 26 to one, no matter how you slice it, because he might be able to work out a trip that's close to the action. He can track perfect sting, the six to five favorite, every step of the day, every step of the way. Another unbelievable price up there is number nine, Charlie May for Steve Carter and Brett Miller here. He shouldn't be 14 to one, Dave. No, no he shouldn't. And as I said, there's a lot of power on the outside here. And number nine, Charlie May is some of that power. He's been second in three straight starts, but boy, oh boy, they were all good. American Courage, American Courage, and was second in the aforementioned Hella Blue race. Charlie May to me, after I watched both replays again when I was doing my picks, I watched them both twice each. The horse who impressed me most was Charlie May. Last night, we had an interview with Andrew McCarthy after one of his winning drives, and he told us a little bit more about a buck bet Hanover. He had a very difficult choice to make in here with staying loyal to his trainer, Tony Alanya there, or going with the long shot upset winner, Hella Blue. But Andy sounded like he thought he had a chance to win this in a shocker. Listen, I tell you what, two weeks ago, I had a buck bet Hanover on top of my Road to the Meadowlands pace top 10 after his win in the Messenger Limb. But in the Messenger final, he was following cover over a sloppy track, and he went off stride turning for home, and he barely made the Meadowlands pace final by finishing fifth in his elimination, I should say. So a buck bet Hanover right now, he's not at the top of his game. Is he leaving the gate? I suspect he is. Chase H. Hanover is driven by Brian Sears, who produced the 27-1 uh, to 1 upset for trainer Linda Toscano two years ago with Best in Show. And a lot of sharp handicappers that I know said Chase H. Hanover's elimination effort was better than it looks on paper. There's no question about that. I did like Chase H. Hanover's uh, you know, third place finish at 35-1 to 1, and his prior two starts, he looked good in the Messenger. He's also raced this year at the Meadows where he won an overnight race and won 51-3. Why is that pertinent? Because that tells me that Chase H. Hanover has the ultra ability to go no matter what the track size is. The Meadows is 5 eighths, Yonkers is a half, and the Meadowlands is a mile. Dave Lawless Shadow is now back on the track here our picks for the Meadowlands pace. Who do you think will win? Charlie May. I think he's going to get into it from the outside. Brett Miller gets that Meadowlands pace victory that eluded him by a nose in 2016. Well, it's our signature event, ladies and gentlemen. As you see our selections there, it's on gate and ready to go. Six to five is the price on the current favorite here. Number one, perfect sting. A little bit of a delay there from Lawless Shadow, but that's okay. We want everybody out there to stay safe, have a great race, and there's a look at the favorite Miss Perfect Sting. Perfect Sting is going to look to get a nice, close to the action type of trip. Dave Miller, one of the most patient drivers around, and he's the second all time money leading driver in the history of the game. That tells me that's a good tactic here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is that time. You see the Pacers assembling themselves in post position order. That means they'll be behind the starting gate in just a couple of seconds. So, without further ado, let's throw things up for some last second opinions or comments from announcer Ken Workington. Thanks, guys, and they're heading to the gate now for the Meadowlands Pace Race 9. Uh, steady rain starting to pick up once again. The track still rated good and still conducive to uh, a lot of speed here tonight. Perfect sting. Right now, 6 to 5. It's post time. Preferred equine starting gate rolling for the field of 10 three year old Pacers. 45th edition of the Meadowlands Pace, $700,000. Again, 6 to 5, the one perfect sting. At 4 to 1, the 7, 1 800, 5 to 1 on 4, Southwind Gendry, upset elimination winner for Yannick Jingra. So it's Dave Miller and Perfect Sting at 6 to 5. Try to show them who's boss here in race 9, the Metal Lands Pace. Here they come. And they're off in the Metal Lands Pace. 1 800, trying to blast off. So is Rocky Road Hanover. Lala Shadow put in play there with Southwind Gendry on the inside. And it's a firing line into the first turn. Six or seven wide. Hella Blue and perfect sting protected rail. They're four deep. 
And now surging is Lawless Shadow. Lawless Shadow going up, perfect sting on the inside. 1-800s, three wide and driving on the outside. Hellabaloo left out there, fourth on the outside. Southwind Gendry left three wide at the opening quarter. Then it's Chase H. Hanover on the inside. Looking to get underway is Charlie May from the rear of the field. Then Rocky Row Hanover. The trailers are you, a buck of bet Hanover on the inside and American Courage. 25-3, amazing opening quarter mile. Perfect Sting finally does clear but paid the price. That south wind, Gendry going up three watt on the outside. 1-800 faltering and coming off the course now. So at the half, Perfect Sting took over but gets steady pressure from Southwind Gendry on the outside. Tough trip for him. Lala Shadow in the pocket spot. It's Charlie May second over, 53 and two for the half mile. Third over is Rocky Road Hanover. No racing room for Hella Blue. A bit of a shuffle on the inside sixth. No room for Chase H Hanover on the inside seventh. A buck of bed Hanover stacks to the far outside. He's tracked by American Courage who has to pass most of them here at three quarters. It's Perfect Sting. The ball's in his court. Perfect Sting on the inside. Lawless Shadow looking to shake loose. Three quarters, 121 and three in the pace. It is Perfect Sting by two. Perfect Sting now closing in. Charlie May had a perfect cover trip here with Super Brett. Brett Miller trying to bring him by. On the outside, Charlie May. Perfect Sting digging in. Lala Shadow shaking loose late. Slugfest to the wire. Charlie May, Charlie did it, Charlie May! Lala Shadow close there with Perfect Sting and Southwind Gendry. Charlie May in the pace, 148 and three for Super Brett. Wow, we had a lot going on there, Dave. Little lots to try and explain here, but Charlie May, I credit you for an excellent selection. He will upset the Meadowlands pace field here, but where do we begin with all of the action at the half and on the final turn with some breakers? Pretty crazy. First, we saw number seven, 1 800 break down the back stretch and go inside the pylons. Then we saw Charlie May take a couple of bad steps. We saw Rocky Road Hanover take bad steps. We saw Buckabet Hanover take bad steps. But with a second over trip, Brett Miller gets his Meadowlands pace coming from off the action to get the score in 148 and three. And boy, oh boy, what a payoff that is. Charlie May, one week after going to the gate at four to one comes back 14 to one for the betters brett miller super brett former driving champion here the backstory on this horse dave is incredible don tiger in his life he's a professional horse player like us he's bred one horse it's this one the son of the gelded son of mcardle out of the mare stipple hanover he was told about that mare being in a kill pen, believe it or not. Oh my he rescued her. He bred her to McArdle. The result is Charlie May. It's been an unbelievable ride for him. He was the horse of the year in the state of Ohio last season, and he has been brought along perfectly by Steve Carter. One race in the Meadowlands pace for trainer Steve Carter, and now he is a pace champion. I the tell you inquiry what, Steve sign Carter has been posted, job. ladies and gentlemen, by the judges here. Inquiry sign posted, the inquiry being shown on your TV monitors uh, with an incident on the far turn and breaking horses. Nine, Charlie May, the unofficial winner. Five, Lawless Shadow second. And number one, Perfect Sting was third in the photo. Four, Southwind Gendry was for 9514 is unofficial. Continue to hold on to all tickets. All right, you do see Charlie May taking that bad step. I don't know if he was coerced into that, but ladies and gentlemen, this is going to take a little while to Your decide. Your attention, please. There is an inquiry dealing with the unofficial winner, nine, Charlie May. Continue to hold on to all tickets. Dave, I know this is a little bit difficult to describe, but it does look like he took a bad step. It caused a chain reaction behind him. Right. So we have to determine, or the judges more accurately have to determine, did number four, Southwind Gendry, bother Charlie May enough to make him start that chain reaction? It's very, very difficult to determine, and that's why you're going to see the judges go back and forth with this tape roll-in and try to determine what exactly happened. Maybe Charlie May stepped on a wheel and went off stride briefly before getting his act back together and charging home to win the Meadowlands pace, but these results are unofficial. Once for again, ladies and gentlemen, this inquiry deals with the unofficial winner, 
for possible interference on a break coming around the final turn. Inquiry on the unofficial winner nine Charlie May possible interference while throwing in steps off stride coming around the final turn continue to hold on to all tickets. The unofficial top three finishers ladies and gentlemen was number nine Charlie May number five lawless shadow and number one perfect sting was third but as we continue to look at this tape Dave I think you've analyzed it correctly in that uncovered spot challenging the leader is Southwind Gendry he's going to take a first misstep and Brett Miller is going to react to that yanking Charlie May to the outside it's a tough decision for the judges here was was Charlie May at fault or was he you know, directed into it by the bad step by Southwind Gendry. Well, uh, you know, as I can do, you know, uh, the, what I see here is that Southwind Gendry may have just bothered Charlie May enough to send him to the outside, which of course sent Rocky Road Hanover off stride. But it's not obvious that Southwind Gendry sent Charlie May off stride. It's just a matter of, like you said, did he take that one or two bad steps that was enough to ruin the momentum of Charlie May? Have to jerk him to the outside, which caused the chain reaction. A tough one for the judges to call. Boy, an unbelievable chain of events. This is not the first time we've had a serious inquiry in a big money race. Remember the Hamiltonian a couple of years ago ended up in the disqualification of what the hill. So they're, you know, they're going to make the best judgment call they can. And uh, this one is, this one could go either way. Yeah, it really is uh, just a tough call. You're watching again right here off the turn. We do see that. Southwind Gendry was just a little bit hinky off that turn. Was it enough to impede the progress of Charlie May to make Brett Miller jerk the horse to the outside? That is for the judges to determine as we see several horses go off stride near the rear of the field. Yes. Now here's what will happen over the course of the next you know, minute or two or three until they make their decision. They will decide whether to disqualify Charlie May. They will call Ken Workington on the phone with that information as we continue to peer out at the infield tote board. You see that little dot next to number nine that means he is the subject of the inquiry over this track Dave that was where some hellacious I guess fractions early the final time a very respectable 148 and three we knew we were in for some excitement tonight but I, I didn't see this coming well no and the fact of the matter is Dave that I did pick off perfect sting and once I saw the way the trip panned out for him I knew it was going to be very difficult for him to win and yet he was very valiant throughout the final eighth of a mile as Charlie May was going by and a very very nice mile for the second straight week by Dr. Ian Moore's lawless shadow who has really really distinguished himself in both his pace elimination and the pace final there you see the total pools Dave almost seven Seven hundred thousand dollars was bet on tonight's Meadowlands pace just in the one race. Usually we have a handle for the entire card of uh, approaching or over four million dollars. We'll know more about that a little bit later. I don't know how many times the judges are going to take a look at this but we will tell you this if they do decide to make a change Charlie May will be disqualified completely out of the money and Lawless Shadow will be elevated to that first spot. He's a son of Shadow Play who won the Little Brown Jug in heroic fashion for his trainer Dr. Ian Moore and Dave Miller several years ago. Shadow Play a great horse for him and now it looks like he's got another great horse uh, by that sire. You know I was talking to Dr. Ian Moore for 10 consecutive weeks. Lawless Shadow was always in my road to the Meadowlands Pace Top 10 and he kept waiting for the horse to excel. He kept waiting and then on June the 19th at Mohawk he did excel winning in one. And two. So much so that in a $128,000 Ontario Sire Stakes gold race on July the 3rd, Lola Shadow was sent to the gate as the 2-5 to five favorite. But he ended up third in an unspectacular try, and Dr. Moore told me, you know what? He just didn't race well. We're very disappointed in him. Nonetheless, he came back seven days later after shipping down from Ontario, raced well for second, missing a neck to Southwind Gendry, and tonight, if the judges deem Charlie May has to come down, he, Lawless Shadow, will be the official winner of the $700,000 Meadowlands Pace. As we continue to await the final decision, it could come at any moment. Ken will break in and interrupt us. How about the action of this year's Meadowlands Pace into that first turn? They were three and four wide all the way around. It was really kind of crazy when you consider that from the get-go, Perfect Sting wanted to get himself in a pretty good position. But at the quarter, Lawless Shadow was there. We can't stress this enough. You want to be close to the kitchen at the Meadowlands, and yet Charlie May was just enough to come from off the pace and work out a second over trip. Your attention, it looks please. Like the judges Your attention, have a please. We have a disqualification oh, of nine Charlie May. 
He will be placed ninth for causing multiple interference while on a break coming around the final turn. The five lawless shadows second and placed first. One perfect sting third and placed second. Four south wind gendry fourth and placed third. And three chase h hanover was fifth and will be placed fourth. So the new top four five one four three. All right, Ken Workington, thank you very much. So we will eventually see Lawless Shadow, who had that late shoe change, too, by the way. That's you know, right. And that's never he, a good sign, you know, Dave, whenever your horse has been in the back paddock. But it worked out very well for Dr. Ian Moore and Lawless Shadow. Mark McDonald will hop back in that sulky seat and make his way back to the winner's circle. I hope we get a chance maybe to hear from him. I don't know if we can, because we are over our allotted broadcast time uh, by quite a few minutes here. But there you see it, ladies and gentlemen. It will go official any second. 5143 is your unofficial yet soon to be official order of finish in the 45th Meadowlands pace. One quick question, too, while we're awaiting that, Dave. The first horse to take a misstep on the backstretch was 1-800. I know we can only speculate. It just seemed like Tim Tietrich felt something and just got him out of the way. Yeah, it could have been something of a, of a minor injury. It could have been something with the shoes, or it just simply could have been the track condition. But once 1-800 took a couple of wonky steps, he had to go to the inside, and he was out of the race. Well, Lawless Shadow is making his way back to the winner's circle in very you know, slow fashion, I mm -hmm. guess. You might as well take a little victory dance and pose for the pictures as the reins continue to fall. Once what again, ladies and gentlemen, just to clarify, nine, Charlie May finished first and was disqualified for multiple interference while on a break turning for home was placed ninth also to clarify for Southwind Gendry fourth and placed third did comply with the breaking rule in the stretch so once again the result is now five one four three lawless shadow Mark McDonald for Ian Moore Dr. Ian Moore RG McGroup Limited Serge Savard and Frank Cannon presentation will be made by the Honorable Phil Murphy governor of the state of New Jersey and First Lady Tammy Murphy. We just got a message from driver Tim Tietrich. What happened to 1-800, Dave? Yeah, 1-800 had a hobble fall down, and that's going to hinder any horse. Too bad. A bad equipment uh, mishap cost 1-800 in the Meadowlands pace. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we honor our winners from our live show tonight. The Dorothy Houghton went to J.K. First Lady. The William Houghton Memorial to Ali Wag Hanover. The Hambletonian Maturity won in an upset by Beads. And now the official winner of our Meadowlands Pace, Lawless Shadow. We're going to stay on the air for another minute or two. Maybe we can get some winner circle reaction. But we know we will get to see Governor Murphy present that trophy. Hopefully somebody's got an umbrella for him. Absolutely. And Governor Murphy has been such a staunch supporter of harness racing. So glad to have him here to give the presentation to Mark McDonald and Dr. Ian Moore and their connections for winning the Meadowlands Pace. What a night at the Meadowlands. There's Jess Otten, I think, getting her usual camera shot. Uh, she is a social media queen. Be sure to follow us on all that on at the Meadowlands. Getting action, you know you're going to get that big smile there from driver Mark McDonald, who wins his first pace. Yeah, uh, Mark McDonald, the pride of Prince Edward Island. He's won the Gold Cup in Saucer, and now he's completed the double, the Gold Cup and the Meadowlands pace. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we hope you have enjoyed our coverage over the past couple of hours, our first time here on Fox Sports Net. So for Dave Little, announcer Ken Workington, Gabe Pruitt, and Jessica Otten, I am saying, Dave Brower saying so long from the Meadowlands, where Lola Shadow has captured the Meadowlands pace.